song. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life. Alexa, continue. Sorry, I interrupted her, Ryan. Oh, Big Daddy, is that you? Yeah, that's who it is. Listen to this. Hey, how about that for a start? Hey, that's a good start, Big Daddy. Good start to our was late. good good start late to, to our the... good start to our first midweek mashup. It's uh, what the hell's with the red lights? Oh my god, I forget. Call the cops. There's a there's a robbery in progress. Okay, uh, Ryan, welcome welcome to the first show. This is show number one. Alexa, stop, please. I'm gonna get in trouble with uh, all the music. <laughs> No, that's why I uh, did that, Ryan. I did that because, um, you know, if you go more than 15 seconds, Facebook and YouTube, they it's lose the their minds. The government loses their shit. It's that there are aliens that run our government. I don't know. So are you ready for tonight's show? I'm I know ready I'm ready. For, I'm ready for tonight's hey. show. I'm like all Johnny cashed out. I'm, uh, look at this. I'm black on blue, I think. Or was this shirt black once and now it's blue? I don't know. But uh, we got a great show for you folks tonight. This is the Midweek Mashup. Let me just tell you the ground rules of this show. First off, everybody keep their clothes on. This is not a Friday night free-for-all. The show will discuss the last... Ryan. <laughs> the show will discuss the last couple days and maybe our predictions for the upcoming week and weekend. This is what, March 6th, 2019? At 9 p.m. Well, technically 9.04 now. Well, depending on where you live, Ryan. It's 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock somewhere. Okay. Well, so here's the deal. All day I'm sitting in this damn chair producing this show. People are sick. I got guests that are dropping like flies. But then it's good to have friends. You know, uh, our first guest tonight who's going to be coming on in just a few minutes. He's already sitting in the back office, smiling, giving me the signal. He's ready to go. Uh, Gerald Glassford from, uh, you know where he's from, Ryan? Did you do uh, any research? From uh, Pop Culture Cosmos, yes. Very good, Ryan. I'm, I am very impressed. And uh, he's going to come on and talk about Marvel Comics and I guess this big movie that's coming out with uh, a young lady's name that I don't, I don't even recall – hearing about her but apparently she won an oscar but because of me not watching the oscars because it gets too political and stuff i miss this poor young lady we're going to hear all about her and the new movie and he's got some really cool stuff to talk about coming up very shortly very soon then after that after that and i think you're really going to dig this guy i really do ryan after that dawson's on a mission you know this trump wall these checks, the checks with, uh, uh, what was his name, Cohen? Yeah. And who was it, Stormy Daniels? You know, where's Uncle Bruno when you need him? By the way, he will not be showing up until after 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because he is doing something with another show. Is he cheating on us? <laughs> he is. He's cheating on us. No, Bruno is like the network master for all Facebook live streams. If anybody wants to get people connected – on the internet with different shows of equal or better quality than ours. <laughs> Get with Uncle Bruno. Um, but yeah, Dawson's going to come on and he's going to talk about these checks and we got pictures to share. I got pictures to share when we talk about Marvel Comics. Lots of pictures tonight. But first question, Ryan. Yes. First question. What the F is going on down there in Georgia 
in Florida area with these alligators, man. I have no uh, idea. Did you see the beast they found? Listen, check this thing out. Look at that thing. Wow, he's huge. He's got to be 15, 20 feet plus. Right. I think uh, I think the female alligators get to be like 16 feet. I was doing a little research on it. Yeah. That's a male. And apparently uh, 700 pounds plus. Oh, uh, he's um, huge. He was found in like a drainage kind of ditch type situation. I think on the Florida border, right by Georgia, maybe our Georgia, Florida border. Yeah. Anyway, you know, the parks and recreation people, they weren't having that near the road. And when they got close to him, found that he was like all shot up. I guess people were shooting at him, you know, which is, I don't know. I guess if you see something like that, you get scared and you start shooting. Yeah. But, I, uh, hey, I, I, don't, I don't blame them. What a beautiful creature. Hey, Ryan, you want to hear some good news for Let's the first some good show? News. Let's hear All right, some good ready news. For this? The people in the chat are going to dig this. We actually have chat working. Hey, Tanya, how hey, are you? It's been a while since we had chat working. Yeah, I worked on that all damn day, too. We got that worked out. Uh, Bruno's saying midweek mashup Wednesdays at 9 p.m. He got it right this time. He didn't last get it time. right last time. <laughs> no, he said 9 a.m. Yeah. Uh, Robert Tucker saying Florida Georgia Line. That's a good band. <laughs> They're not bad. They're really not bad. I was listening to almost like a whole album earlier this week. Their okay. their their first album they they released that they had their first hit on. That whole album was pretty good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So tonight we're gonna have some fun with Alexa. Of course, Ryan and I will, will uh, talk to our guests. This is an open mic program, so if you're in the chat and you want to kind of like suggest some things you're welcome to do that i'm going to put uh, the website up right now ryan if people want to check out the old shows because that's what everybody's doing they're binge watching our shows ryan i got a message from youtube today saying way to go your new youtube channel starting to really get some activity good day. i said well thanks but tell me when we hit a million subscribers and i get one of those fancy plaques on the wall i, I think a million's what for the gold one I don't know. I don't uh, know. Yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think you get one at a. I think it's a hundred thousand. Oh, is that right? I'm just a hundred, just a measly there's, hundred. There's, there's a there's a couple different ones you can get. Okay, I guarantee you, the most video views we ever got was seventy two thousand, and typically we have somewhere around fifteen to twenty thousand watching. Uh, now, something rare. something uh, interesting for you is there's a YouTube channel that all they do is cut shit open to see what's inside of them, and they actually cut one of them open to see if they're solid gold. I won't leave any spoilers. Just search for it on YouTube. Okay, good, good. I always like to bring value to my my shows, uh, watchers, viewers, whatever. Did that damn door open? Yes, this place it did. is haunted. This place is haunted. Built in 1893. We're in a cold town in Northeast PA. It's called the Brook to the locals. Uh, Ryan, you're not that far away. You're in where? Hazelton? Yeah, I'm very close. And it's very cold tonight. It is very cold. And yes, Bruno, we're going to go for the gold. You know, the son of a bitch told me he couldn't be here till 10, but he's in our chat right now. <laughs> what the hell's up with that guy? I love him. Uncle Bruno, everybody, he's in the chat. He'll be with us live after 10, mixing it up with Dawson, who's going to talk about um, something with AIDS and um, either a cure or, I don't know, I have to wait until we find out and get Dawson on the screen. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, the silver play button is for channels that surpass 100,000 subscribers. Good to know. Uh, gold okay. play button. Gold play button is 1 million. Diamond play button is 100, uh, 10 million. And a custom play button you can get after you reach 50 million subscribers. Cool. Hey, hey, there's John. How you doing, John? Good to see you. Oh, my God. Ryan, John, Tim wait a second. You're Ryan. How did that happen? It's hard enough for me to keep up with chat sometimes. All right. Let's just get right to it. Um, oh, it's fatty. Look at this cat. This is a cat that nobody sees. Wait a second. So, you're, so your, house is, your house is haunted by cats. Well, no, she didn't. Definitely not. Oh, well, there's a cat's behind right there. Okay. All right. We don't really want to get. Okay. Bye. That was nice seeing you. Okay, um, let's get our first guest. Let me check the back office and make sure he's still here. And let me drop the alligator, which is just, could you imagine? 
driving up and that bad boy staring at you. No, I could. Let's get rid of him, make some room for our guest. Folks, I think you're going to really dig this part of the show. As a matter of fact, I know you are, and you're going to dig the rest of the show. Stick with us and please share. Um, let me just ask him. Gerald's in the back office. Are you ready, sir? Okay, he's talking, but he doesn't understand that I can't really hear him uh, until we bring him live. So let's just bring him live. It's Gerald Glassford, everybody, and uh, Pop Culture Cosmos. Ready? How are you guys today? What's going hey, on, Gerald? How are you, bud? I'm doing well, thank living- you. And 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 just want to say hello. Just just want to say hi to everybody else in the chat out there. Hope everyone has a great week and a great weekend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We just figured uh, if we did this show in the middle of the week, we'd be we'd be able to get uh, cool people like you to come on the show. Well, thank and, you. Thank uh, you. It's well, great to be on. Yeah, you've been on once before, I believe. I don't know if it was with the software or just on the Facebook platform, but uh, you were great talking to you then, and I know we're going to have a good time tonight. The topic tonight is uh, Marvel Comics and a movie. That's right. Uh, Captain Marvel, the much-anticipated next installment of the cinematic of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that hits theaters this weekend worldwide. There's been a lot of anticipation for it, excitement. I know a lot of people are really just, uh, just, just a tremendous, tremendous, you know, just great amount of buzz for it. Just everybody's looking forward to it. That I know of, a lot of friends, uh, my co-hosts, everybody that's involved with Pop Culture Cosmos. And you know what? It, it's just great to see something like this happening again. It's great to be excited about being part of the movie scene, right? And and tell people really quick about your uh, your websites and everything. Um, oh well, well actually, what we do is uh, we're part of the Pop Culture Cosmos. First off, our website is popculturecosmos.com. But what we do mostly is we do a radio show that's syndicated worldwide. It's listened to if you catch it anywhere in the world. There's there's like on 17 different radio stations. It gets replayed seven days a week. We have new shows every Monday and Friday. That also gets transported to one of our many podcast networks. So if you're on Apple with iTunes and Apple Podcasts, you're on Spotify, you're on Podbean, Podcatcher, uh, Stitcher, a whole bunch, all those other great podcast outlets, just look for Pop Culture Cosmos. Again, we have new episodes covering the latest news and trends in pop culture every Monday and every Friday. Something tells me you've done that before. Uh, just you know, force a habit. What can I say? Just oh, it's very well done. I appreciate professionalism. Okay, Absolutely. so let's get into this weekend's big hype with this movie. It's it's a big movie because we got a female lead in this movie. Yes, it is the second movie to come out with a female. I guess as as the leading face in a superhero movie. Obviously, the first would be the Wonder Woman movie, which came out just a couple of years ago to big acclaim. And also a, a lot of money that was generated worldwide. In fact, a sequel is being made for that DC and Warner Brothers. They're already approved it. It's already being uh, it's already in production and it's uh, gearing up for a 2020 release. But right now, this is the first movie that's female uh, driven as far as a, a lead in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which you know people have just been so geared up over the Marvel Cinematic Universe over the past ten years, and this is the first time this is happening. This is now going to create more opportunities, I feel, within the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward. We have a Black Widow movie that's also going into production soon, and that will be coming along the way. A lot of people were really stoked for to see Scarlett Johansson in her own movie. But then you also have a lot of other great things to look forward to with Avengers Endgame coming up at the end of April as well. And this hopefully not only will be a great time for people to check out her origin story and how she fits into all this, but also as well, give you some little nuggets and little Easter eggs to break down with the anticip- anticipation excitement that everybody has for Endgame as that hits, like I said, it, later in April. Cool. So we got a big summer coming up. <clears throat> yes, yes we do. And I'm sure your, your website is going to be covering it all. So again, folks, make sure you visit the website. Ryan's uh, conveniently put everything down below in the chat. And uh, thank you, know, you, Ryan. I appreciate it. No problem at all. My pleasure, bud. Let me tell you something. Ryan isn't playing. We Ryan's building me a, uh, a computer. I'm pretty sure, and a spaceship for the new studio. 
right now I'm just in, in a spare bedroom and my guitar and stuff, you know, my dogs are laying behind us farting right now. Oh uh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. So what were some of the bullet points you wanted to talk about? Like, like what kind of, what kind of money are we talking to produce this new show? And uh, tell me, tell me some more. Well, it comes out, obviously it's, it's going to be a, a big budget, uh, you know, type of movie. So obviously it's taken what, 150, $200 million to, to produce this type of film. It looks like it's going to generate most projections have it between a hundred and $150 million domestically in its first weekend and about $300 million worldwide in a first weekend, uh, China, overseas, Europe, Canada, they're all going to, it's actually going to be pretty much a simultaneous worldwide release. So there's going to be some big numbers generated. It most likely will not hit the numbers that Black Panther hit last year, garnering a total of about $1.4 billion worldwide. But still, anything over $800 million and around even what Wonder Woman made is got to be considered a success for Disney and Marvel because she is someone that you're going to be seeing not only in this movie, not only in Avengers Endgame, but she is going to be a key player down the road for the next phase of Marvel movies after what we find out what's going on with Captain Mar with Captain America, with Iron Man, with some of the other stars from the previous phase that we're now you know going through the finality of of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Though some of those stars are their contracts have ended, they will not be continuing. Some may live, some may die. We'll have to wait and see what happens in Endgame, but she is going to be a face going forward for much of what we see in the next phase of the Avengers movies coming up down the road. You know, uh, one of our watchers, and he visits the show as well, Michael White says, the actress's name. Yeah, her, the, her name, that's a great question, Michael. It is Brie Larson. She is best known for winning the Academy Award from 2016's Academy Award winning The Room. Uh, so if you get a chance or if you hadn't seen that, check out The Room. She had a uh, the she won lead actress for her performance in that film. So definitely some the, obviously that obviously got her, her on the radar and obviously got her noticed by Disney. So that you know they obviously have a lot of faith in her to go ahead and be able to anchor the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Everybody's being so polite in the chat, right? <laughs> Brian, <laughs> actually, Brian actually beat you to the punch. He had it written out in the chat down below. But yeah, I really wasn't aware of this young lady. But wow, she can uh, she could fill the suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I know I know a lot of a lot of people will be going her there to see see her obviously because she's a very attractive woman. But she's an outstanding actress. She has a lot to give, and I'm hoping for a lot of young women and and women all around the world will be able to take inspiration by the fact that this is yet another success story for Hollywood. And the fact that after what happened with Wonder Woman and that becoming a big hit, if this becomes a big hit too, that the movie industry as a whole will be able to see women as as a viable uh, leading opportunity for for you know these superhero films. It doesn't always have to, to fit one stereotype, one specific type of uh, individual to have to lead all these films. It can now be a broader base of individuals that can lead all these films to success, as we saw last year with Black Panther, as we saw the year before that with Wonder Woman, and hopefully going forward as well. Cool. Ryan, do you have any questions? Uh, no, he covered all his bases pretty well. I know, right? <laughs> this guy's like just, he's like uh, an encyclopedia. Okay. Well, we do, I, well, we talk about all this stuff and so much more when it comes to pop culture. Our shows, like I said, every Monday and Friday, it's an hour. It it's it hits you hard. It hits you good. Gives you the latest and greatest of what's going not only in movies, television, film, video games, but sci-fi. Just we we just touch on a whole variety of subjects each and every episode. We bring on guests. We have a lot of good banter back and forth between myself and my co-host Josh Peterson, and we just like to say we have a good time talking nothing about pop, talking nothing but pop culture. Well, you know, shout out to your partner; he should come on sometime. Our oh yes, show, he will. I, I'll ask him to do so, Tom. I'll ask him. Your show, on the other hand, silly, serious, open mic, adult talk. It's a cornucopia of conversation, and uh, it's like this show is like. A good pile of mashed potatoes. Well, you know, it's definitely pretty... a great pile of mashed potatoes. Put on some of that gravy, though. 
It makes it really good. You know, it adds a little bit of extra flavor. Yeah. And that's what it says here at the end here. It says like, whatever you like, however, we like to serve it up how you like it. So there folks, you if you're watching and you have ideas for future shows, hit me up with an email, big daddy at big daddy And uh, me and Ryan will get to work on doing research. And if it fits our show and most of we've covered damn near anything on this show, um, you know, right, Ryan. That's right. We'll get on it. But everybody always asks me like, what's this show all about? It's about just hanging out and talking. And uh, I knew you were going to be a great guest. I'm glad I'm starting to show up. I mean, all my guests are great, but like, this is so cool because it's so trending right now. Now, yeah. I might be going off the bullet list because you had a couple things on the bullet list, but um, one of my uh, viewers was saying that uh, you said there was some controversy. Oh, uh, that's true. She, he said John uh, uh, Cassio. Cassio? Uh, Junior says uh, she also made some very questionable remarks. What was that all about? Uh, last year, I believe it was last year, she did indicate uh, as far as the journalists that cover the movie industry, um, she was very saddened that it's usually only one type of demographic that she talks to or speaks to. And she wanted to see more diversity when it comes to the whole, uh, I guess, entertainment reporters, the entertainment, uh, as far as whoever covers entertainment. She said there was too many white males covering that industry and she was wanted more diversity and that she would uh, limit herself as far as who she would speak to in the future going forward because if it was just predominantly males that were that were interviewing or white males that were interviewing her that she would go ahead and limit that and she, cause, because like i said like she said she wanted to go ahead and see more diversity more women more person uh, more people of different ethnicity ethnicities and and color and 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 things of that nature she wanted to see a more equal balance on that. I, I know a lot of people have followed suit with their comments, but she was really the first to speak out loud for that as far as uh, from a celebrity standpoint, because as you know, you, you see these films you coming up, the PR companies, they get these celebrities in front of the camera with all these different outlets. And they just, uh, you know, they don't, they're, they're worried about their position when somebody goes ahead and says something about that, as far as the PR campaigns for a movie, what would the backlash be? Well, the backlash, it looks like, from a lot of other individuals, alt-right has been rumored, uh, uh, other individuals, misogynists, uh, uh, you know, male chauvinists, uh, alt-right, whatnot, have, have made it out as far as with written articles and also a lot of YouTube videos about trying to put down uh, her upcoming movie saying the movie's going to fail that this is the reason why it's going to fail this is the reason why it's, it the movie's not going to be able to be success, successful at all brie larson is a horrible pick as captain marvel etc 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 and then the facts uh, that they're also going ahead and just providing a lot of other things as well that are are negative like for instance um review bombing rotten tomatoes the user review before the movie has even come out yet uh, changing the way that Rotten Tomatoes and other outlets are actually going about their user reviews because, like I said, they already review bombed uh, Captain Marvel like before the movie even comes out. So a lot of controversy has come away, a lot of it based off of her comments uh, originating from, I believe it was a year ago, in regards to the entertainment uh, journalism industry. And was that the controversy around the film that you were discussing on the bullet list? Yeah, it is more of her and what she said and the statements that she's made than the actual movie itself. Because, yeah, there is going to be some people out there that are trying to be against this film just because it's a female-led film as a superhero. There there are some people out there, opponents out there initially, but those were the same individuals out there that were against Wonder Woman being put out there originally two years ago. And you saw how well that did, movie did. It's one of the most th well thought of movies in the DC movie universe. It's also one of the best performing. So it really didn't hamper that movie. I don't think that part of it's going to be a, an issue, but there is a lot of backlash from some uh, groups that have gathered together to try and say some bad things about Captain Marvel and trying to prevent people from actually seeing it before it even comes out. Why do people have to get so negative? Like, just the uh, world we live in right now, unfortunately. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure that they're going to do much because if you look at the box office for Wonder Woman, it was like some, something to the tune of 821 million, 822 million. 
Exactly. And I they believe can, they, can, they can hate all they want. They're not going to do anything. And I believe Captain I Marvel, will. if if all goes well, should be in and around that area. If it goes over a billion like Aquaman did for DC, that would be great. But I'm not expecting that. I, I'm expecting right between 800 to 900 million, which obviously would be a big win for Disney and Marvel. Yeah. And it, it basically as well sets her up well for her going forward because the key is not exactly what she does in Avengers Endgame coming up as well next month because she's going to most likely be a big part of that. It's what she is going to be all about. And are people going to be drawn to see it, drawn in to see her in the next five, 10 years of Marvel movies coming up? Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to guess. Yes. I, but you know, it's getting back to, you said the, the chauvinistic stuff and whatnot. I mean, that's, there's like a real problem in this country. It's like, um, I mean, obviously she's dressed. She's 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 not in a loose fitting clothing, right? Um, I hate to be. I'm going to throw a little controversy here. Uh, it's like we got to figure this out in America. Guys are going to be guys. Guys like you know shapes. <laughs> she's got them. Um, but I agree with. I think that there should be more women uh, superheroes. Uh, bring them. I you know I have a 15 year old daughter. I tell her she could do anything. Just put her mind to it. Um, I'm not I, have two, I have two daughters myself. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. But I mean, but I'm, what, what I'm getting at is like, everybody's making uh, something out of everything. Now it's getting old. It's getting old. Just go to the damn movies and buy some popcorn for 50 bucks. You know, get, you get re free, free refills. If you pay the 50 fee, right. Cause they don't expect you to go back. I think the refills comes with a $75 package. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, and then I take, listen, I always take my bucket and I get it refilled and I go home with it. Then I cover it with saran wrap because there's nothing better than movie theater popcorn. But do you remember how much it cost when we were kids? You couldn't. I do. We went to the movie. I used to leave the movies and go back into the next movie. It was so cheap. But uh, yeah, you got to give them credit though. All these, I guess the technology and all the the video uh, uh, technology and stuff to make these movies, to make them like they are, which is incredible. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like, it sounds like we're dealing with like the Elks Lodge when I, when I joined years ago, you know, it was a man's club. Well, guess what? If it wasn't for women, the club would have been boarded up by now. And I supported women back. That was when I was in my thirties. I am now 50 going on 52. And uh, yeah, I support women and I want more women superheroes. That's, but we that's still, how I vote, right? I'm, I'm with you there. Say, Thank I you. just wanted to, I just wanted right. to say this we still have uh, you know every time one of these type of movies comes out it always seems like it has to be a, a landmark uh, you know thing that's happening a breakthrough and whatnot we saw it last year with Black Panther and the year before that with Wonder Woman I mean as my co-host Josh Peterson says it diversity this should already have been a thing this should already, should have already happened a long time ago where it comes to this point where uh, Captain Marvel comes out this weekend and it's just a superhero movie. It's not doesn't have to be the first this or one of the first times that it's that as far as it's concerned. It, we should already be to the point as a society where diversity already would have happened to the point where this is just a superhero movie that people can be excited for. But be that as it may, it is coming out this weekend. To uh, The reviews are out there. I think it's right now standing as we speak around in the mid-80s on Rotten Tomatoes and in the mid-60s to high 60s on Metacritic. So decent reviews all the way around. My, I know my girls are excited for it, and I hope a lot of other people in the, as well, women and whatnot out there, get inspiration from this that say, hey, you know what? You, whatever you set your mind on, you can go ahead and accomplish anything you want. Yeah, bravo. Well you said. know, uh, exactly. Like the young girls need, need uh, people to look up to just like we did. And uh, there was just so few of them back in the day. I do remember Wonder Woman on TV when I was a kid, though. What was her Linda name? Carter. Linda Carter. Linda Carter, yeah. I was just thinking, it just hit me. Um, I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm a, I'm a 100% uh, dude, okay? So sorry if I think that this this uh, lady is looking smoking hot in her <laughs> Marvel costume, but I support women. I hope they get more of them. Bring them. Let's have them. And they don't even have to all look great 
in a in a suit. Let's just just be entertained and and have a good show, right? Uh, Doss is that's... in the back office already. And no, I think ahead. that's the question, yeah. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll hit your bullet list here and make sure we covered everything. Do you have it in front of you? I'm trying, my computer's being slow here. No, that's pretty um, much what I, I wanted get... to cover is just the, the importance of this film, and a lot of people are looking forward to it, not only because, like I said, what it represents to women out there, but also what it's, it represents going forward for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Is it coming at the 100% right time for an origin story, which is basically what this is? Maybe it's not the perfect time. It's kind of... May, I don't want to say shoehorned, but a lot of people are saying that it, it is shoehorned in there as far as in between what went on what we saw last year with Infinity War and now what we're going to be seeing upcoming in Endgame. But it is necessary for her story to be told before what goes on in Endgame because she's going to play a big part in that film. And like I said, going forward for the next five, ten years, she's going to be one of the, the leading faces of what the new Avengers will be evolving into after Robert Downey oh, Jr., Chris there. Evans. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. I was looking up his bullet list. Yes, we did. Well, hopefully he can come back quick and say a proper goodbye. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think, did he cover what the predicted haul was on the tickets this weekend? I think that was, I think, yeah, I think he really did cover everything. Yeah, yeah I'm oh, sure he is trying this. to get back in the back office right yeah. now. Let's bring him back. Bring him back lot. on. Got to give him proper thanks. Absolutely. Um, uh, by the way, when, anyway, you, get a, when you get a chance, Bruno told me to ask you to look at your messages. I said Jennifer sent you a message, an important one. Yeah, and and I got to tell you, as much as uh, I want the beautiful Jennifer sitting on my lap, sitting right to my right, it's literally impossible for me to get her here. I'm not in the original studio. She wouldn't even know where to go. And I have dogs that are acting crazy today. Um, for some reason, my Bella, who is a rescue dog, is uh, having major issues with all the other dogs. And I, um, uh, she's just, I, it's just too much. I, I wouldn't. I don't have a crate. I don't crate her. So I, I, I sent her back a message inviting her on next week, which is a great teaser because everybody misses the beautiful Jennifer. You know, yep. like we didn't see that coming, but seriously, if I could and she knew where I was and she can find the get through the labyrinth to find me. But I'm in a live show here. Uh, I got a hug from her last night. I saw her last night at the store. Yeah, yeah. You, said, you said yesterday you saw her. Yeah, let's bring I want to bring him back. And I just want to show the few pictures that he sent me. Yeah, let's bring him back. Bring him back because back. I, 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 I kind of want to get his take on another movie coming out. Oh, cool. Hey, guys. Okay. I'm back. Start, hey, welcome back. We lie. That happens on our show. Don't sweat it. That happens. Oh, no Ryan has a question. Uh, what, how do you think Dark Phoenix is going to do coming out this summer? That is an excellent question uh, because of the fact that it is not I mean, it's obviously going to be something that's pushed, but not pushed as well as maybe it would have been under different circumstances with the Fox Disney merger mm -hmm. that should and I think it's in quotation should have taken place by the time that movie comes out. If you get a chance, people out there and check it out, the latest trailer on YouTube, it does help, I guess, um, I, I guess identify the story a little bit more. It helps bring out exactly what the movie is going to be all about. I think Dark Phoenix is going to do well. But you, as you know, there's been a mixed history with the storyline and the performance of the various X-Men movies over the past, what, 18 years now, yeah. 19 years now. And it's just, it's a good, 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 excellent question. I think probably it's going to do pretty good if Disney puts enough muscle behind it. But I don't think it will do well enough where we're going to continue to see X-Men films by themselves, at least in the short term. I think they're still going to go ahead and reimagine mm -hmm. Disney will with their own touch like they've done with everything else that they bought and have their own spin on it. And whether you'll see your, whether you see your, uh, the own X-Men films coming out in there in the future, or you're going to see them part of the Marvel cinematic universe. I think you won't get that answer for another two, three years. And I think this will be the last X-Men film you're going to see for a while. Yeah. It's going to be interesting because they have, uh, they have some heavyweights in there as far as actresses. I see Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Sophie Turner, it's going to be interesting to see how well that does. And, and it is, if you get a chance, check out the trailer because it actually leads and infers a lot of things about a lot of different characters, including Jennifer Lawrence. So, yeah. 
I was just curious what your take okay. was on it. No, that's excellent. That's an excellent question. Yeah, it, it's going to do pretty good, but I don't think it will do well enough to sustain itself as far as having an X Men run. Mm-hmm. I think Disney's still going to go ahead and and either do something of its own, whether it's new X Men movies three three to five years down the line, or they're just going to integrate them into the Marvel Cinematic mm-hmm. Universe. They just it's not their property but it now becomes their property as far as from a movie sense, obviously the comic books it's theirs, but it, you know, it's not been their property for the past 19 years in the movies. And now I, obviously Disney at this point wants to have their own spin and own say on the X-Men universe. Gotcha. Thanks for the info. Hey, so. Gerald. Great question, Ryan. Gerald, uh, you sent me three additional pictures. I want to just cover them. Is this one of the scenes from the movie coming this weekend? That is correct. That is uh, a de-aged Samuel L. Jackson uh, looking like he did in the 1990s because the film takes place in the 1990s since it's her origin story. Uh, that is her. Wi- that is him with Brie Larson who plays Captain Marvel. Uh, I believe they're in S.H.I.E.L.D. at this point in time in the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters as it was in the 1990s looking over some files, if I remember correctly from the trailers, as she gains more information because she lo- she loses her memory when she gains her powers and her return to Earth sees her getting some of those memory backs and some of those memories back and sees her, I think, looking over some photos, remembering her time as an Air Force pilot. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's two more. Uh, that's a pretty cool shot. And I was confused because I was convinced it was him, but you just uh, explained clearly why I was questioning if it was him because I know he doesn't look like that. No, not today. anymore. But All yeah, right. they did. They did use that de aging. Uh, I guess the CG work, computer work that has now become so famous that works sometimes. Like I believe it has with Samuel Jackson, but sometimes, well, you can you know whatever movie you want to talk about, it hasn't worked for others. I thought maybe he was just got using some kind of new hemp soap or something. <laughs> um, here we go. Is this, here's uh, picture number two. What's going on here? Uh, she is there in a training scene with her mentor, played by Jude Law, uh, who seems to be in all the hit movies these days, or at least many of them, along with Samuel L. Jackson, of course. Um, there, I believe, uh, on the planet Cree, if I'm not mistaken, during the course of this portion of the film. I, I've not seen the film as of our recording now. I will be seeing it this weekend. But uh, from what I'm seeing and inferring in the trailers is that they're in the middle of doing a training session as he helps her try to, I guess, uh, have uh, help train her to have those powers to the fullest extent that she has. Because once she gains those powers, it soon becomes a realization that she becomes one of the the most powerful entities in the universe uh, when she uses it to her fullest ability. All right, so cool. I'm going to see this damn movie because it sounds like this young lady's going to kick some ass. Yep. Um, uh, she, I hear she does. I hear she does. I am going to show one more picture, and I saved the best for last as far as I'm concerned because every time they come up with these these different uh, characters, now maybe, maybe I'm not aware of this one, but this is some really good makeup. And who is this coming up on the screen? Well, that is the leader of the scrolls. Uh, the Kree, as far as the story taking place, takes place at a time where there's an interplanetary battle between the uh, two different races. The Kree, which uh, Brie Larson's character is is in- involved with, as far as her side defending against the scrolls, which you see here in their normal form. Uh, this is the scroll, one of the head scrolls that actually lands. Uh, onto Earth as they're just beginning to make their exploration into Earth just before he transforms into uh, whatever shape-shifting form he sees because he can shape-shift he can, he can shape-shift even to you guys out there. So that's the whole gist of, of what's going on with the scrolls. That's their main ability is that they're going to go, they can go ahead and look like anyone that they want to go ahead and shift in, shape-shift into and they, they go ahead and infiltrate key components of of shield and other entities in order to go ahead and carry out whatever their evil plans are during the course of the movie so he's the bad guy pretty much pretty much okay so just listen if you ever run into any of those disney people me and ryan are totally available for doing like bad guy parts just so you know absolutely you you and i both you and i both i'll take their paycheck anytime 
Absolutely. So really quick, uh, th I, I really want to thank you for saving my butt tonight. Jack Neary was sick. He was going to talk about Amazon and how big the company's getting and some predictions for the future. And of course, the whole dealings with New York City. But before you take off on me, could you again tell people about your website and more about your show? Well, first off, guys, I want to thank you and your audience for allowing me to come on to the show. I just It's just great. Anytime I'm, I'm able to appear and if you want to get a hold of what we're doing, it is, again, the Pop Culture Cosmos. Just type in Pop Culture Cosmos on your Google search, Bing search, what have you. Even to ask Alexa, say, Alexa, play the latest episode of the Pop Culture Cosmos, and it should come right up. Again, we are a oh, – I'm sorry, sorry. Again, we are a worldwide syndicated radio show that gets played every Monday and Friday, but it's also replayed seven days a week. But if you want to catch our podcast, which is the way most people catch us, just check it out, Apple. Uh, just check it out on Apple, Podbean, Podchaser, Stitcher, Rick Spotify, and Pop Culture Cosmos, and it's you're on your way. iHeartRadio, you name it, right? Uh, I'm not on iHeartRadio well, yet, but we've we've asked. Uh, hopefully, we'll get on there very uh, sometime soon. But if you want to check out the latest and greatest in pop culture, just type in Pop Culture Cosmos, and and like I said, you're on your way. And again, links are down in Listen, the comments. Man. I just put them back up. Thank you so much for doing so. Oh, no problem at all. Listen, Gerald, you're a great guest. Please come back often. And uh, we're all going to go see this movie. Ryan, let's do it. Yep. Uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Glad to have you on. Awesome. All right. We'll, we'll catch you again down the line. All right, guys. That's Gerald. And uh, please do me a favor. Go and check out his website. You, you will be... Uh, You'll be pleasantly surprised. Also, he has a page and group just like us on Facebook. Uh, make awesome. sure you hit yeah. that up as well. I have that Did link you get well. that? Yep. Yeah. You got that link too. Cool. All right. So uh, moving right along, uh, Dawson um, is in the back office, and I'm going to let him stew <laughs> a little bit because God knows when he comes live. Uh, but I do have a photograph uh, of Dawson that uh, I found. Apparently, you know, last night on the commercial, which was literally a, a damn good show. Yeah, yeah, it was an I hour. I love how it was a very long commercial. It was an hour long commercial. <laughs> it's an hour long commercial. And here's the picture that I found on the internet today of Dawson going to the doctors because last night, remember, he had a hard time talking. Yes. So tonight we will find out just what the hell he's doing to himself here. And hopefully find out that the doctor did something to cure his laryngitis. Um, but isn't he fun? He must have been bored in the, in the little doctor's cubicle. And he's got a really cool doctor that's like, you know, got a sense of humor. Shout out to him. He'll tell us his name. He's uh, down in Texas, too. But this picture cracks me up. <laughs> Dawson cracks me up. Yeah, he's a character. When, when we can... Uh, when we can hear them. I'm going to reset the show. Um, did I tell you the strain of the month for this show? Uh, I think we went over it last night, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, it's the, no, it's, it's, or did, uh, or did you the, change it again? Cause I you did. told, you told me it was, not, you told me it was Bubba Kush last night. Yeah. Bubba Kush is not the strain of the month anymore. Okay, no. Go ahead. Um, here's the, I've decided to change the, um, the strain of the month to uh, super lemon haze. So while I reboot the show, could you look into that and tell people what that's all about for our cannabis loving friends around the United States where it's illegal? Thank sure you. Sure thing. Quick restart of the show. Big day. I'll be right back. Do what you got to do. All right. So strain of the month is super lemon haze effects, leaving you happy, energetic, uplifted, euphoric, and focused uh, medicinal effects. Uh, they try to help stress, depression, fatigue, pain, and lack of appetite. But you may encounter dry mouth, dry eyes, paranoia, dizziness, and anxiety. Uh, as far as our grow info, it's a moderate uh, difficulty to grow. It grows over to 78 inches tall, and it yields 1 to 3 ounces per foot squared, and it flowers within 7 to 9 weeks. Uh, let's see... Our lineage here uh, is a hybrid, uh, lemon skunk and stavia, uh, super silver haze, which will give us super lemon haze. And that would be our strain of the month. 
And Big Daddy will be back with us very shortly. By the way, Sour Diesel, good stuff, John. Going to be bringing Dawson up here soon. Uh, Maybe we'll have Uncle Bruno come up for a little bit here. Uh, And we're going to check our uh, bullet list here, see what else we have going on for tonight. I know we have a couple little random topics we'll be discussing. Uh, Let's see here. I'm going to have to be, hey, uh, Big Here Daddy, I'm, uh, I'm supposed Dang. to be uh, reminding you to bring up a new movie. Uh, the, the new movie? A new movie. I'm reminding you to bring up a movie. Oh, was I that? Uh, no, was, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. That was actually for uh, our guest that just left. Okay, well, I didn't know it was for the guest, so. Yeah, we all screwed that one up. We'll, we'll save that for the next time he comes on. Uh, it's no big deal. It's an old movie. I think it was in 2016. It was uh, def- I don't know if it was a DC Comics or or uh, did they merge together? But it was one of those ones where all the superheroes got together. And, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, folks, if you're just joining us, this is the first ever midweek mashup of the Big Daddy Road Show. This is my uh, sidekick uh, Ryan here. He's killing it with uh, the. Uh, Play by play and Google. Are you Googling or do you do like one of those like government can't tell what you're searching for kind of search engines? Uh, well, like when I'm looking for the straight of the month info and stuff. Right. I'm actually uh, using uh, leafly.com. Leafly? Yes. Interesting. And what did you, I, I really did do some running while we were off the air. I had to reset because our lips were like a, one of those 60s uh, Chinese kung fu movies. They weren't lining up. Yeah. Um, and that happens with internet, uh, at least maybe until we get to 5G, right? 5G should help that. But um, <clears throat> anyway, what what was it that you said about uh, Super Lemon Haze? Uh, let's see. Let me scroll or did back you up lose here. It? Here's what I got. Oh, no, I, ha- I have it. I have it right Oh, you here. do? Okay. Uh, attributes. Uh, effects will leave you happy, energetic, uplifted, euphoric, and focused. Uh, medicinal uses for stress, depression, fatigue, pain, and lack of appetite, and uh, possible negative effects are dry mouth, dry eyes, paranoia, dizziness, and anxiety. Dizziness? Yes. Uh, very small, though. Very, very low chance of that. Yeah. I think that sounds like you're power smoking like Snoop Dogg. Here's what I have. Uh, Super Lemon Haze has a tart, zesty lemon flavor and aroma with sweet notes of candy. Damn, why do we live in a state where you can't touch this stuff? Hey, pretty soon. Okay. Pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, it's right. It's medicinal, but I don't know. It says the bud, which has a speckled green and brown appearance, is covered with a dense layer of resinous trichomes. This strain is popular in the West Coast of the United States and in British Columbia. So to all my cannabis-loving followers, and I know there are many, there you go. That's the new strain of the month. It's right there. For now. It's uh, for now. It could change at any time. This is a silly show. Okay, so Dawson's in the back office. If he's sitting, first of all, remind me. No, don't even remind me. You just ask him, what the hell kind of stuff is he sitting on? He was taken off out of his chair, and it's, it looks like he's sitting on like a, I don't know, some kind of like wildebeest or something. Big Daddy, right. I, got a, I got a message request for a new strain of the week, strain of the month for one of our upcoming strains. Uh, Northern Lights. Oh, Northern Lights. Actually, I I, I think I part or I partook of Northern Lights at a festival in a state where it was legal, and I could tell you something. That's a good time. That's a good time. Yeah. So who's requesting that? That's undisclosable information. I understand. Okay. Well, you know we are a news uh, show, and, and we will not. Uh, we will protect our sources. We won't be pulling any Cohen shit. I'll tell you that on the Big Daddy Road Show. Never. Um, okay, now he's drinking out of a silly cup. Let's bring him live and see what he's got to say, if he could talk. Everybody, Dawson Hicks from Texas, coming live. I brought my pet, remember? Last night, bring pets or babies? By golly, he could talk. Yes, and it's Mr. Bigglesworth from Austin Powers. Oh, that's hysterical. That yeah, cool. Yes. Let me see him. Put him up. Wait, put him up on the screen. Mr. Bigglesworth. Okay, bring still him down. Has, bring him down a little still, bit. Still has bring the him. tag on it. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Bigglesworth. It's got the little. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Now you can see it. Cool. Sweet. Yeah, 
So today is remember the Alamo Day, the day that the Alamo fell in Texas, which is kind of a you know Texan holiday. We have like a lot of them, but with that being said, and it, since it's your first ever Wednesday night mashup, the first person that decides to share, and you know we get more followers straight from Texas, will be a little handmade soap sealed in a little body scrub. Is that hemp soap? Maybe. No, it's a volcano. Well, but, um, it's handmade goat milk straight from Texas. Remember the Alamo and share the show. Okay, wait, wait. You're giving away some products. What's the product's name? It is um, Texas Handmade Suds. She makes all of this handmade. No kidding. Yeah, and it's wonderful. This is the soap, and it's sealed in plastic. It's not like just open. I'm not just touching it. And this is the sugar scrub. And it's, she makes it all. She has so many like different fragrances. This is really good. And yeah, so straight from Texas. How there are you going to know who the first person to share? We get people sharing the show more and more now, but good luck figuring well, it out. The, the viewers will pop up and Ryan will see the, whoever's watching. And well, I hope that people can eventually find a link to this lady's store and buy there's some already, There's already four shares on this video while we're live now. Sweet. Oh wait, no, no, there we go. Uh, well, so far Bruno's the first one to share it, so I think Bruno's getting some free sugar scrub. <laughs> oh Lord, he can take it to the <laughs> Asian parlor. Oh boy. Hey Renee, so, what's going on? Welcome to the show. We got a, that's a new follower on the group page, guys. Say hello to Renee. Hi Renee. Um, Hi Renee. Please, please share the show. Um, so I missed some of the chat, and you guys know I can't keep up with all of it. It's impossible. Maybe with the new system, Ryan will be able to do better. Uh, well, Nicole was here. Nicole said uh, she has a new movie to go see. Uh, speaking of the uh, the new Marvel movie coming out. Oh, cool. Uh, Jennifer was in there. John was in there. I've been watching. Yeah. Well, again, like I told you, most people watch these shows. They binge watch our shows after the fact. Now, listen, if we can, if Dawson can confirm the person that was the first person to share. And guess what? If it was Uncle Bruto, he's not getting the soap. Yeah, yeah. It's not happening. This is not eligible towards anyone that's part of the show. Yeah. This has to be somebody new. I will send also my empty beer bottle that I'm about to open. I will send <laughs> that to you. And it'll be signed by Ryan and I. And yeah, good luck. You can put it in your garage or your little bar. And it's from the first show. This is actually, it's like getting a tire off of NASCAR. You could put lights in it and make it into like a, light, a lit thing no, for your porch. No, there's going to be no lights added. This is just, uh, come on. You, they're getting soap. Ryan, this is number one. Here's to you, America. Here's to you and the world. Let's try to make it a better place out there. Okay. Yes, let's do. Because, um, so anyway, uh I'm very sorry I'm missing some of the chat. Bruno said, rest in peace, Lou Perry and King Kong Bundy. Yes. I was I was way behind today with the problems with the software, but hey, we got our chat working. Um, good. And uh, I was going to try and get a picture of King Kong Bundy because that's old school. You know I love old school. And everybody can see him. He kind of looks like me a little bit without the glasses. And I think the beard and the jacket. Yeah, I think he used to wear like those one piece uh, wrestling suits. Yes, he did. Which is, by the way, what we're going to put you in, Dawson, when we have midget wrestling, if that's still allowed in America. Are we going to Are we going to put him in the one piece Borat swimsuit? That's right, Borat, and cover me in Wesson <laughs> oil and just throw me out there and see what happens. That's right. You know, roll me in butter like a crouton. Yeah. Oh, cool. She's going to share it on Dynamic Dojo Talk Radio. Hey, those <laughs> ladies should be over here watching the show. I have missed, I think I've missed two Dynamic Dojo Talk Radio shows. Where are my ladies from that show? You give them hell for me, Renee. Speaking uh, of that, them. today yeah. at a local coffee shop, I was talking to a 60 plus year old woman that she literally every night, every night that the local beer garden's open, she dances on the pole and she can work that pole. And then, um, this other woman that's very reserved. Well, I just said, watch part of this. And they were laughing, cracking up. And I said, I said, um, she's the original Blanche. I call her. I said, you should come on one night. And she was like, well, I'd eat that Bruno a lot. And I just nearly died. I was like, I think Bruno's met his match. You know what? I hope a lot of people come on and give Bruno some, some heat. I yeah. really do. I think he'd have fun with it. I think he would uh, too. And Paula, oh my goodness. She's hilarious. She's and Bruno, says, Bruno says where he's going, he needs soap on a rope. 
You know, you can't be dropping a soap. <laughs> There's actually a store in Comanche that has soap on the roof. <laughs> I saw that yesterday. <laughs> How random is that? This is Big Daddy's favorite uh, beer, and everybody's telling me to reach out to the company and see if they can, um, you know, uh, I'm going to switch beers if they don't start throwing me some bones here. You should try Lion's Head. Uh, you know what? Lion's Head is an inexpensive beer. That is fantastic. Ryan, reach out to them. I'll that is, that is brewed in Pennsylvania. That's Ooh. right. And it's so inexpensive. And it comes in bottles. Everybody likes the bottles because it's cooler. Mm. It's been proven scientifically um, in blind studies that it's 150% cooler, Dawson, to drink out of glass. That's scientific. Really? Yeah. yeah. I pour my beer into a into an actual glass glass and then drink it. Yeah, it's, but you also pay nine and ten dollars to fifteen dollars a drink, and we're poor well, people. That's how much they pay they charge, but you know, you make friends with the so, bartender and you know. I don't know if you caught that, Dawson, but I almost did a spit take. You said your your um um older lady friend, she was a pole dancer? Or no, no there's a pole, there's a pole in this in this beer garden. Of course, there's, oh. a, there's a there's a playpen for children in the other corner. But um, not even joking. But um, there's a, there's a pole, and she just she's known for it. It's it's pretty phenomenal. Like she's pretty good. Oh, so she was actually working the pole? Yeah, and she's an antique. She owns an antique store, but her name's yeah. I call her the original Blanche. We had some fun today. Well, you asked Blanche to watch this show, and you I did. I her, added them. I added both of them today. Oh, cool. The group. And yeah. you asked her if she wants to come on my show with antiques because I love antique furniture, like Stickley brand. Um, I have a couple stickly pieces, and we could talk antiques. That would she be has the huge signs. There's a Walgreens sign that I want so bad. It's a huge Walgreens sign that has the arrow and says "Pharmacy," you know, drive through. It's awesome. Hey, uh, Bruno, what time? What's on the clock, uh, Ryan? Where are we at with the time? What time is it? Uh, it is just about ten o'clock on the nose. Okay, so I see now why Bruno's starting to bust your chops. He's uh, looking to get on. Uh, under Dawson's skin, uh, he's saying in the chat, "What about President Trump? Uh, you know, paying, paying his bills. Off. Yeah, paying his bills." Well, Cohen allegedly said that you know Trump that was him him actually writing checks for the hush money. You know, paying Cohen to take care of the Stormy Daniels issue. Which I mean, you know, there are the checks, and some are saying, "Well, you know, he was just paying you know the the attorney Michael Cohen to do his job. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up. We're going to wait to do this discussion when we have you and Uncle Bruno. Okay. But yeah, and I got some pictures of the checks, the the alleged checks. The and, New York uh, Times broke the story. I got it off the New York Times. Oh website. yeah, New York Times. Well, you know how I feel about all these news agencies. I think we're, I think we're capable of doing more investigative reporting than some of these news agencies. That's I think. That, I think. I think journalism, for 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 the most part, is uh, it needs a it needs a a jolt. It needs a like a rebirth. I like Al Jazeera. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, <laughs> Al Gore made it. Al Gore actually started the network, and it's on like Dish or whatever. But it's like from across the pond. Like, and they report everything. They reported Ebola like three or four months before it actually broke out in America. They were like, "This is going to be a you know a major problem for you know North America and the continent over there." So, yeah, it's really it's progressive. They don't have an agenda. They're not owned you know by co corporations like Rupert Murdoch. You know, Fox is very conservative. Ted Turner was known as a liberal. They call it the Clinton News Network. So, I mean, really. It's really, I mean, it reports everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. And then you hear about it maybe three to six months later on American news, but it's kind of tainted a little. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool network. Al Jazeera. Hey, uh, Dawson, uh, Robert Tucker, who's also from Texas, right? One of your friends? Yes, yes. He's actually running for city council locally. Oh, good luck. Yeah, we mentioned that on a prior show. He says, y'all can go to hell. I'm going to Texas. Who was the famous non-Texan who said this? A little trivia. Yeah, it was. Oh, well, who was it, guys? Here, yeah, here's your heart I, music. Go Ryan, do you know? Um, uh, Davy Crockett. I was. It was. What state was he from? Uh, Tennessee. Davy, Davy Crockett. Crockett. He the, the wild frontier. Yeah. Um, wow, the chat's going by. Hey, folks, keep your chat uh, to the minimum. Some of you guys are writing novels down there, and that just covers the screen. <laughs> 
Um, looks like looks like well, looks like Bruno got it too. I'm not sure if he copied and pasted it or actually typed it out though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are chiming in. Uh, Davy Crockett. So um, Lee Johnson says MAGA like a mofo. See, my dad, it was funny. He had never seen the Alamo. And the first time he did, he was with mom. And he goes, well, no wonder we lost. <laughs> you know, and mom was like, she was like, John, it was a little bigger than that. And he was like, I know, Sally, I'm just making a joke. Jeez. You know, because only the chapels left. That and Pee Wee Herman when Jan Hooks was like, there's no basement in the Alamo. Remember that? The classic line? No. He was looking for, he was looking for his bike. Pee Wee no Herman. Yeah. Pee Wee Herman in, in uh, which one of his movies? Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Is that the one where he's well? He's always on his bicycle. Yeah, what well, was stolen? And somebody <laughs> said it was in the basement of the Alamo. And Jan Hooks was like, "There ain't no basement in the Alamo." <laughs> yeah. What was Pee Wee Herman's uh, show on HBO? It was hysterical. Remember with the chair and uh, Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure or no Pee Wee's Playhouse? Yeah, Mecca Lecca High, Mecca Heine Ho. Yeah, Mecca Lecca. Yeah. <laughs> <Mecca -le> <laughs> and the chair would talk, great. and the, everything then, would talk. And then what did the poor guy get in trouble for? Nothing compared to what's public, going on public today. Public nudity? Public lewd no, conduct? No, it wasn't public. public. It was in his car. I thought it was in a movie theater. Jeez, real? Okay, well, so it was in a dark movie theater. Yeah. I had to, you know, the guy... He didn't have Paul Rubens? He, he's a, he was very good in um, Party Monster. That was a Party Monster? No, no, he was in Blow. with um He was in Blow with, uh, with uh, Brett... Uh, Johnny Depp, wonderful movie. He was amazing in that movie. He was okay, really amazing. Up, guys. Uncle, Uncle Bruno is asking for the link. I'll send I just him. got it to him. Whoa. Okay, then. We're good. I got it. Yeah, right. he's on the ball. <laughs> just really quick, this just came in from uh, the beautiful Jennifer. She says, okay, damn it. I wish I knew how to do it from my house. Let me know in advance what time. I thought it was on until 11 p.m., but I'll keep watching and post my picture that I just sent to you. Um, wait a second. She just sent me a picture. Oh, Hey, okay. oh, no. <laughs> wait a second. Okay. Um, and well, he needs a five minute break. Maybe we will have her on tonight. <laughs> no, no. Next Wednesday, if she's willing, but uh, beautiful Jennifer, I did send you the link and I think we put it down below Ryan, or I sent it to you. If you want to come live with big daddy, it's very simple. There's instructions on very long winded instructions and it's repetitive and redundant for a reason because some people just don't focus. So if you read it through at some point after the third time you're told how to properly do it, you should be able to do it within five minutes. Be live with us. Yeah. Um, it's easier than me. Yeah. It's easier than Dawson. And which, the, by uh, the, way, the link is the link is down below in the comments. We're thinking about also sending Dawson to the, to the twentieth person that shares tonight's show with a bar of soap, just see that bar of so. soap, and, and one of those little what do you call those things? Those little poppers, the little psh, did you pop? No, I was thinking more like those. Uh, they rub the dry skin off your. Um, maybe you could rub their back or something. It puts the lotion on the skin, or it gets it the hose again. The lotion, <laughs> it gets the hose. <laughs> Uh, John says, I'm surprised that Dawson doesn't buy Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Paul Rubens. Doesn't say Buffy the Vampire. Oh, was uh, was he on Buffy the Vampire Slayer? The movie? I don't was. know. Wasn't I, it I the old not, school movie? I think he was. I'm not a TV person. I'm a YouTube. Uh, I'm a history buff. Uh, I'm not saying I never watch TV. Definitely as a child, lots and hours of TV, but... Uh, I'm more of a movie. What's up, uh, Speed Racer? Number 32 Speed Racers in the go house. Speed Racer. Go, Speed Racer. Uh, go he's somebody Racer, who's he's be coming on the show again soon. And guess what, folks? He shaved. He no longer has facial hair. So <laughs> be prepared for that. Uh, he's saying much love to Uncle Bruno. Uncle Bruno, you have the link? Are you sure you sent him the link? I definitely sent him the link, yes. All right. Well, while we're waiting, I had something to just some little filler things to talk about. Um, how about I want to talk about this in the future, Ryan? Would you put a post and note? What's the name of this show with the people in Alaska? Um, they're out supposedly in the deep woods surviving themselves with themselves. Um, what's that show called? Alaskan Outback, or I don't, I, I don't watch too much TV. 
Yeah, I don't either. Well, anyway, everybody knows these characters, right? Like it's a whole family. Well, I was on a website that said, that was talking serious shade on this crew, and well, that they actually live in luxury during the show, <laughs> and other people build the cabins, and they're not. I, really- I had a friend on Tough Love VH1 that was a reality show, and she allegedly got like you know engaged or whatever and it's funny because she we would go out with her you know in dallas you know off the cameras you know because she fly to la and they call her you know so-and-so from texas and she had this you know and it was like a matchmaker deal well it's funny because she'd come back and she'd be like oh my gosh you know we'd be out eating and she'd be like yeah well they tell you to say this they tell you to say that they give you your lines they tell you exactly what to do and then the rest you ad lib you know and people would be like oh it's so-and-so from double love and she's like hi you know and <laughs> And then it was bad because about five years later, she was in People magazine <laughs> and it said, uh, it said, and so-and-so from Texas, still single. She was like, oh, I was like, wow. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it, there's a no stage. I mean, there really are from this, from the lights to the well, makeup to the, yeah. My audience is the, the, the smartest audience ever. Uh, John says it's Alaskan Bush people. So that was close. Um, but yeah, apparently the, the father of the family, he come from a rich family out of Texas, I believe, and I guess um, he had inherited quite a bit of money. So he always said that he was blessed and had like a great younger years, 18, 20 years old. But then when they went up there, they all pretend. And also the names that they portray on the show is all completely uh, fake, allegedly, based on an article I was reading. So I'd like to look into that. And also like Duck Dynasty and all the other uh, shows. Ryan, could you imagine if we had people telling us that would be so easy? Just they could tell us in our ear what to say. I'll have to wear my Duck Dynasty shirt next Wednesday. It says happy, happy, happy on it. That's like Ren and Stimpy. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Yeah. That's a great cartoon. It is. Everyone's a log. (laughs) There is there is so much adult humor in that cartoon. It is incredible. That in Rocky Rocco's Modern Life. Rocco's Modern Life. Uh, Pinky and the Brain was another one. Speaking the brain, yes, the Animaniacs, yeah, it was great. Uh, because the Queen of Gore could not make it tonight, I wanted to just share this before. Uncle Bruno's having a hard time connecting, by the way, uh, but I'm dying to get him live any second. But here's a picture that had the Queen of Gore come live with us tonight. Um, I was going to show this. This is what apparently frostbite looks like. Yeah. I thought that was both gross and worth sharing. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, look at that. Mm. It makes me want a steak. It makes you <laughs> okay. Let's get rid of that. I don't know. <laughs> um, and also, I was wondering why this sign would even be made. Uh, and you guys could just just give me your thoughts on this. Why do you think this was even made? It makes no sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of our vacation one time to the Grand Canyon. Oh, goodness. You you ran into an octopus at the Grand well, Canyon? Well, no, but we missed the bus. You know, you can ride from bus. Like you, There's different stops, you know, looking at the majestic, you know, and you wait for the other bus to come and pick you up. There's no air conditioning. Well, we missed the bus, and we were like, we'll walk to the next little little station so we were walking in the middle of nowhere, and it's our entire family, and when we come up on a sign that says, warning, biohazardous and and nuclear <laughs> nuclear material please stay away so what do we yeah. do we take a picture right beside it we line up and set our cameras and our entire family we're like you know i'm sure that was great for our um, 10 15 um, year old brains Dawson, could you lift your camera up just a tick yes something tells me your camera is not showing you how you show live exactly but yeah there you go perfect perfect yeah okay so Uncle Bruno, don't give up. Keep trying. He must be having connect, and he looks he looks killer tonight. He's got his baseball cap on backwards. Maybe uh, maybe you should try sending the link. Maybe the one I sent him just doesn't want to work. Well, you think? I mean, that hey, could maybe. be. But he made it on. All right, I'll do it. I'll send it to him right um, now. Do you know why too? Um, it wouldn't let you boost your post or whatever your advertisement because we've been labeled as news by Facebook because we broke that story about the pecans last week. Yeah, could I talk about that really quick? Let me yeah. let me send him this. This was really frustrating. I think I even kept one of the windows open. Yeah, so I, I knowing that this show, we put a lot of effort into it. And even with all the people that were going to start the first night being sick and everything. Um, yeah, so I set up this advertising campaign. 
and I'm thinking I'm going to blitz it, you know, at least 24 hours prior to this show, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you would think it's, it used to be easy. I ran ads before, and I had success with some of them. Um, but now, because of all, I guess, the internet, um, you know, people posted bogus stuff just because uh, you have to, like, prove who you are. So I have to prove that I am the Big Daddy Roadshow. And, but here was the annoying part, and this is the part that gets a little conspiratorial towards Facebook. Dawson and Ryan, listen to this. So I do what they tell me. I go through the process starting, and it says, first of all, where do you live? And it doesn't have the United States listed. What? It doesn't have the, it has United States and mid something islands. It has, of course, Puerto Rico and every other uh, American and territory. Yeah. Territory. Every other place on the, in the world, but not my country. So I picked the one that says, and then I went into another window and there's a whole bunch of other questions I got to confirm. I got to send them a photo ID. What? I have, yes. They want me to send them a Pennsylvania driver's license. So That's I guess weird. so known. Yeah, they really got, you know, there must be some imposter big daddies out there. Well, you know, it was reported that, um, that Russia is actually on Facebook right now. Like, five, like 1,200, like, like people are, in Comanche are getting free requests from people that have died like five years ago. <laughs> I mean, so, okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, I just got to tell you, if you're ever going to try and do uh, advertising on Facebook, be prepared to uh, have your birth certificate ready because I don't know DNA, what else. Blood. DNA or a blood sample, stool sample, I don't know. Yeah. It's very strange. And uh, yeah, John, hmm. I thought maybe, but the fact that we didn't even have the America listed, I thought that was That's shocking. Weird. Okay, Uncle Bruno, are you ready? Is your staff ready? Okay, he's giving me the thumbs up. Guys, are you ready for Uncle Bruno? That's We're ready for Uncle Bruno. Come on, Bruno. Um, by the way, uh, Robert, a lot of our people watching are buying pecans for the Texas farmers. And I thought that was pretty cool. I started getting messages. Hey, I'm buying pecans. So uh, let's help. Today was the award ceremony at my office. Yes, yes. Congratulations, by the way. Did did pretty well in 2018. But one of our staff members brought a pecan... Uh, f- French and uh, a pecan. Um, come on now, get get it. Okay, right. what is it, Uncle Bruno? Spit it it's out. It's a pecan French toast in a casserole. It was out wow. of this world. like a coffee cake casserole or whatever. It was like wow. a big casserole. Yeah. It was a French toast pecan casserole. Like with, with cinnamon fresh swirl. New Hampshire, yeah. fresh New Hampshire Ooh. maple syrup. Wow, that sounds great. (laughs) So now, let's get to my Trump. My Trump is just paying the attorney off. There's no way that that check covers the hundred and whatever thousand they say. The question is, did he know what that that payment was going to, though? He didn't. He just, he was paying, he was was paying his attorney. They were billing him. That's it. Six checks? Yeah, yeah, easily. At least he's paying his debts. Ryan, Google that story in the New York Times. I kind of understood it, but I didn't want to like. Oh, you know, hold on like, a second, please. One second, please. Uh, excuse me, Dawson. Ryan is my sidekick. Oh, I don't sorry. Really know that you should come on my show and just start commanding Ryan. Now, if Ryan well, doesn't mind, could you yeah, stay? please? Would you please do it? Because I don't. I want to make sure I get it right. But with that being said, I still uh, when, think that when did the article come out today? Today, yes, the New York Times. But with that being said, I think that we we've taken this too far. Like, you know, like they're reaching really hard now to find dirt on him. And I think that, you know, where again, where does attorney client privilege come in? Like, you know, like it's he Cohen is like Judas or he's like, you know, Brutus. First of all, right. Brutus or Judas. I mean, well, at, Judas. This, at this point, him being disbarred, is that why all of a sudden now he's coming up singing like a bird? I mean, I know that he's trying to reduce his prison sentence. He's not going to though, because he already violated the plea deal the first time. Remember, he lied. To, um, he lied to Congress already. So I mean, you know, he's 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 trying, yes. But I mean, he also called in one day and said he was sick, but he was out the night before with his wife for like eight or twelve hours on the town in New York. What did you? you know, uh, what did you want me to confirm, Dawson? Because I have the article pulled up. Just, just confirm that those checks like were just because I mean the article was kind of written confusingly. Because I will admit, you know, the New York Times is reputable, but. The checks were actually given to the New York Times. They didn't. They obtained them from an individual, 
which is kind of sketchy to me because I mean, you know, if if the New York Times didn't get them from Cohen himself, I mean, anybody can make a fake check that's copied. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. I mean, it's like just let the process end. Let's just end people, this. People you know? are making phony twenty and fifty dollar bills from computers. yeah. That's that's what I found very interesting. <laughs> it was not a single network. Except for the New York Times, like no, no other paper had that. Right. You know, I mean, it's kind of like, hmm, that's weird, you know, because, you know, he's got allegations in the Fifth Circuit of Appeals in New York or whatever circuit it is in New York, you know. So I found that a little, a little odd, you know, because you would think that like everybody would have copies of these checks. Well, unfortunately, I've reached my limit of free articles on New York Times today. See, it just, I just, came up on my phone and I was like, hmm, that's weird, you know, because I haven't seen it. Nobody's reading. That's some some government shit right there. If you're doing that, you're definitely over 55 years old. You know, what popped up on my iPhone, that's the only reason I saw it, was, I mean, it popped up and the picture of the check was there and I was like, hmm, that's interesting, but what quick way, if nobody's reading the New York Times to get it out there, then shooting it on everybody's smartphone. Huh? Yes, exactly. Because, I mean, in the last couple of days, everybody's kind of, they've kind of realized that, you know, there's really not a lot of proof. There's no obstruction of justice. So let's stir the pot a little more. And they've obtained six checks, you know, conveniently, just my opinion. I will post the pictures of the checks that Dawson sent me, along with about a thousand other messages throughout the day. But I can't, I don't have any more space on the show right now. And I don't want to, Ryan, could I, could I just drop you for a second to show the checks? Drop me for a couple minutes. I'll take a, uh, I'll do a bathroom run. Yeah. Okay, cool. But, All right, you know, go. But that I'll means... show the, check of the alleged check, Bruno. This is, uh, you know, uh, Dawson's like, we got to talk about this. I would rather talk about Hillary. Is she running or not? I've heard both. She's, yes and no. she's not running. She said she's not going anywhere and she's advised the Democrats, but she's also anti-Bernie from what I understand, but she's not going to run, but she said she's not going to go anywhere and she's going to fight for what she believes in. With that being said, a couple of days ago, the Clinton foundation, they've, they've uncovered a lot of stuff. I mean, more stuff. And it was on MSNBC of all places, you know, I mean, and so, I mean, there's a chance that, you know, there could be a charges brought against the Clintons, you know, which, again, isn't it interesting Sorry. that the, 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 the establishment, people like Trump, Clinton, at the same time, all of this stuff is coming out, which, you know, there were questions about it. But, I mean, you know, the GOP spent $100 million investigating Hillary, nothing. Then, all, you know, all of a sudden, you know. Everybody has stuff we, going on, and it's just we need to get a signature special to, to see if that's something. actually Donald Trump's signature. Dawson, mm-hmm. is it possible for me to run for president? Yes, as long as you're over 35 years old, a citizen of the country. Yeah, you can run. Can I? Okay, can I? Would you be my manager? <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, sure. Why not? That, okay, that would be I would like. I would like to definitely, I just think it would be great for my grandkids to say, you know, that old son of a bitch ran for president. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. it would be interesting. Well, and you'd, have to, you'd have to ditch me. Why? Why? Well, why is that? Too many skeletons in the closet. You throw them out on the front porch? Nothing to hide. No, no, yeah. what we're going to do, we're going to jump out ahead and we're just going to tell all of our stuff. Oh, we're going we're 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 gonna, gonna, to we're gonna tell where all of the bodies are located. Perfect. Okay, yeah. first of all, I don't have any bodies. I want to stress that. Again, once again, the opinions and thoughts of the guests of the Big Daddy Roadshow midweek mashup are not necessarily the thoughts and, and opinions of myself or Ryan or Dawson for that matter. But and uh, by, yeah. and by the way, now, also the Big Daddy uh, the Big Daddy Roadshow midweek mashup Wednesdays at 9 p.m. supports our troops our yes. men and women, our homeless, our our homeless veterans, which should not be homeless. That's a shame in itself. It is a shame. Yeah, well, it is that's a shame. coming from you, sir. When you want the wall, when I say we should build uh, houses for the homeless and yeah. for that. Does I think like we should Statue put the homeless say, to work on the wall just so it, they can make Statue some money. Give us your tired, give us your poor, unless you're from Mexico or, you know, I mean, think about it. The Statue of Liberty, what did Reagan say? He said, you know, when we 
America is a great melting pot. Some, and I'm paraphrasing. You know, what makes us great is we are a country founded in immigrants, you know, and we welcome everyone and they can come and know that, you know, we, not another country in the world can they move to and say, and become an American citizen. True. You know, Reagan, you know, it makes me wonder, guys, you know, people say that back in the day, our grandparents came, you know, my parents being Dutch and Irish and uh, I don't know what else, uh, but, uh, and then Bruno's family being, you my know, my parents he, had to go through the citizenship. Okay, I believe my grandparents went through citizenship through Paris, or not Paris Island. What's the uh, island? Ellis uh, Ellis Island. Ellis, Ellis. The same okay, way. and then they they came through Nova Scotia. They were miners. Um, they came and they pretty much had their asses handed to them by the Italians. God love Uncle Bruno. But we all sorted that out in a couple of generations. Now we're best buds. But back in the day, you know, people think that it was just one group or another that no, had issues. No, it was like. It was a lot of people had issues. So yeah. I, I was at the, uh, well, I was going to go buy my wine last night and I went to the state store and it was closed. And then it, I, I had an epiphany. Wait a second. Pennsylvania now made it where big shopping centers will sell you wine and beer. I went there and all the young ladies that were at the deli next to the beer place, because uh, I was getting wine, I was certainly going to get some cheese and some meats for that. And uh, they were all different ethnic groups, and they were beautiful people. And we were talking, and they were probably uh, isn't it out. awesome? It's awesome. Yes, it is. It's and, so cool because uh, you're just people, you know. We're not a and they were, people, right? And they were saying like, "Oh, you know, it's tough in this area." And I said, "Ah, just give it a generation or two. Everybody's going to be great friends." But yeah, most I mean, people yeah. you get along with most people. Yeah, is it I, tough? Is it tough meaning that they get a bad rap from the Americans giving them shit? Or is it tough because of the living and the economy and the, you know, because well, in our uh, area, in our area, it's tough to get help because we don't have adequate and we don't have affordable housing. Yeah. But think about this, though. Like when 9-11 happened, right? Okay. Personally, I'm not a Muslim, but... It is not all Muslims that are evil. It is the extreme radical, you know, Islam, Islamic groups, you know, the extreme, the, like, the, like the Nazis of like Germany, you know, it wasn't all the Germans. Most of the Germans didn't know what was going on. So, you know, for us to put a stigma over the entire Muslim population, when there are good people out there, they just practice a religion that are different than us. And I've read the Quran, you know, and there are things I don't agree with, but I mean, it talks about a great flow with a boat talks, you know, and if, it spanned from, you know, when, um, when Abraham, you know, was allowed to have an affair because he was, he thought his wife, Sarah was, um, was not barren. She couldn't have children. You know, Ismail actually was his love child. And if you go back, you know, that's, that was kind of the beginning of, you know, the Islamic faith, you know, and then you have, you have Abraham, the father of Jewish people, you know, and it just began there. So all the three major religions kind of have the same origin. You know, we just have different beliefs. So, I mean, we can coexist, you know, but there's bad Christians. I mean, there are Christians that are just like, you know, as Gandhi said, I wanted to be a Christian until I met one. I think it's yeah. pretty clear. I think it's pretty clear that the majority of human beings are good people or we would have. More yeah, love we are. Beings. There's yeah. Uh, rotten apples in every bunch. Exactly. Makes everybody look bad. And, uh, you know, I was raised uh I'm so grateful to have been raised to treat people with kindness until they yeah. give me reason to. And here's the problem. Every ethnic group has somebody's given me a reason to, to, to be like, you gotta be kidding me. Mm -hmm. So I, I dream and pray for a world where we just hold assholes accountable and yeah. forget, forget this color of their skin. Mm -hmm. And it's ridiculous. So I think, okay, I posted the check that you were all hot to trot about. I, I did cover the Hillary thing. I got word that she's waiting for the Cohen or, or Mueller report before she decides if she's running. She's not going to so, run because she wouldn't have a chance. She, thought, she could be pulling a kiss move where they did their final tour 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she could be just playing stupid and waiting for the Mueller report. And also to see if she doesn't end up in federal prison for whatever you just mentioned, allegedly going on. Um, but I always Good. thought the Clintons were shady, shady characters. And um, I just had a vibe about them. And I probably would still uh, toss back a few drinks with Bill. He seems like a rock star. But, uh, yeah. I, I would like just, to go to the Asian massage pile with Bill. 
Yeah, and John says uh, hate doesn't factor into it. John, you can elaborate if you like in the chat. Um, and now everybody's getting all religious on us. Thank you so, for that. Sorry, oh, hold sorry. on, hold on. I have to ask. No, it's fine because I'm also, besides running for president, I'm going to start that church, Big Daddy's House of Everything. Cool. But remember though, John three sixteen and seventeen go together. John three seventeen says, "For God sent His Son to the world not to condemn it, but to save it." And then there's judge, lest he be judged. He who is without sin cast the first stone. So if you're a true Christian, Amen. you can't pick and choose. You have to, you know, you can't just pick and choose the Bible as you wish. You know, just, you know, yes, we need to keep those that are have committed hey. crimes to put them to justice. But I mean, we as yeah, Christians and why, and can't judge. What, and that's you know, what's going on. There's, you're there's sinning just like they are. There's justice what, isn't equal yeah. anymore. People with <clears> the money are getting away with murder. You know, yeah. uh, kids. Are, I was reading an article where some all these kids are getting abused. When are we going to just wise up and handle, like, hold these people truly accountable? Uh, I think they it was John, in the Vatican. <laughs> I think it was John in the chat that said he wouldn't be surprised if hangings on the White House lawn happen again in this country eventually because people are getting sick of it. Of course, people that are bad apples are going to pull stunts if they yeah. think that they can get away with everything. I'm going to bring Ryan back, and then Uncle Bruno. I'm sorry we interrupted you. Please don't hurt me. Yeah. So anyway, so so today was the Alamo Day in Texas. Remember the Alamo. And, uh, and so anyway, so your uncle knows that I was kind of screwing with you, correct? Did yes, you yes, him yes. In? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just giving you crap because I was like, please, you know, educate this northerner, you know, because I was going to explain it, but I was like, Sp my uncle Spencer's awesome. He can do it literally and like quicker than I he can. But cool. also, he was cool. He didn't. He didn't degrade me. He just basically <laughs> gave me the education. Well, which he's got. He's like cool. you. He's got an awesome sense of humor. I call him Uncle Eddie, like the National Lampoons. Yep. You know, he's, yep. he's like my Uncle Eddie, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a great guy. Okay. I just wanted to get that straight because yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. he was, were, he I was, know yeah. exactly what you were talking about, but yeah. I thought it would be kind of funny to say, you know, remember <laughs> the, the ammo. Yeah. And that's why I said, you know, he's from the Northeast, you know, and he was like, Spencer, yeah, he's, he's funny. He was just joking with you and yanking your chain. Yeah. 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 Us Yankees, we love that Southern humor. I, I love Yankees. I, I mean, I think now, great. I want to meet. I want to meet your. I want to meet your uh, your friend there. Your sixty one year old. Does she got money? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Bruno, she would tear you up, Bruno. Let she me would ask tear you guys you a question from the chat. Robert from Texas says, "We the people are no longer in charge of our government." Do you agree or disagree with that statement? We aren't. I mean, they're <laughs> elected officials. I mean, they're bought out. They they serve themselves and whoever gives them the most. Money yeah, they serve the people that put, they serve yeah. the people that pad their pockets. Yeah, I've got to I've got to put in my charger. So let me know if you can spare me. Okay, I'm gonna drop Dawson while he charges his phone. I'll be right. Uh, no, Dawson, I've already hit the button, but you'll be back in just a few seconds. Look at he's pissed off in the back office. I love when. <laughs> listen, we have to get more professional. We can't be doing this, and we can't be making noise. We got to be professional. So, Ryan, yes. I, I saw put that Dawson on the bench for a couple seconds just to get his collect his thoughts and get his phone charging. First of all, we are known on this show for killing cell phone batteries on a regular basis, folks. More batteries go dead during this show because we never know how long they're going to go. We're just having simple conversations or serious ones. We're having fun one second, then we're talking something serious. And then what's Dawson do? Oh, he's like, excuse me on a professional show. Let me just do. We just get this and what, and everybody's we like, have to, we have to remind some of our regular viewers to, to, to not be watching all the other shows during the daytime and have some power for our show on the Wednesday evening, midweek mashup, starting at 9 p.m. Have you been practicing? Because last time I, you I practiced that, I think, he, I think he's got a teleprompter in the back. <laughs> I think his assistant's holding up a card. Read it right, god damn it. Uh Renee PM, I, underline, underline. <laughs> PM. How okay, many people came, how many people now, came on I'm this gonna morning? Bring, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring Dawson back after I, I have to share all my pictures. I spent so much time. Go ahead, uh, throw them up there. I'm gonna throw them up there. Um let me see. What did I I already got them? Oh, this is a good question, and then I'm gonna bring Dawson back. Uh I think I know what uh, Bruno's gonna say. Here's a good picture. Should you be able to shoot somebody that breaks into your house? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's I don't, three care. I don't care if they have a gun, 
knife or not. I should if I'm you stepping into my house uninvited is is a threat, and that right. should, that's how it should be. And in New Hampshire, we've changed that law. So if you feel threatened, you can fire, even if they don't have a weapon. Some states they have to have a weapon on them to to threaten you, but in our state in New Hampshire, you do not have to. Now let me ask you this, Uncle Bruno. Um, let me drop that picture. I think I did. Uh, what if a character like this walks in your house? Will you have any second uh, thoughts on the matter? Would you pause and reflect a second if this guy showed up in your house? He would have never made it up the front stairs. <laughs> he had a tongue depressor, officer. I felt threatened. That could, that could be a deadly weapon. Yeah, one of my policeman friends uh, told me that um, – you, you, first of all, if here's the thing, if you ever have that situation, God forbid, it's probably best if you put that person out, meaning forever. Done. Um, secondly, he said, yes, you must supposedly in some states, and I think Pennsylvania even, you know, you can say you're threatened, but were you really threatened? Correct. So he said, you just say this, and this is a true story. He said, you just say, I don't know. I seen something shiny in his hand. It looked like a gun to me. Must have been the doorknob. But I was scared out of my mind. And I thought that was coming right from a, a, a tenured police officer who said, but the bottom line is, is, is of course, you're going to be agitated, your blood pressure, you're going to be scared of somebody, somebody who doesn't belong wanders in your house. That being said, I remember when my mother owned these properties, we went at one time had um, a man who just walked in our house drunk and fell asleep on her couch. And she called me to run over and to wake him up. And in his case, he just literally walked in the wrong house and it had been a shame to put him down. He was just having a few drinky poos. So, all right, Dawson, do I, let me see. Do I get one more picture? I mean, because Dawson really should think him, you know, he, I'm, I'm doing this to teach him. <laughs> you know, none of this plug and get your shit ready before the show my I god think, i think in texas you can shoot and ask questions afterwards i think also okay this is these are the two i want to put up really quick because i love this guy and gabe ozzy fritz if you're watching i know you love him too what's the status ryan on ozzy please i haven't been able even to look into it um I know I heard that his, uh, Sharon said that he was out of ICU and doing better, but is he doing okay? Because with all the people, you know. They never um, give you the right information. Uh, he's well, recovering at home following ICU hospitalization. Okay. So Sharon had mentioned that he was, uh, you know, he's probably depressed. I mean, think about being the man, and then once you have medical issues or whatever he went through, God love him. She said that he was bittersweet, that he loved and adored the fans for their outpouring of care and support, but that he was really depressed that he was, you know, floored like that. So, uh, so that's out this show is predominantly rock and roll, but we will cover all music. If it's good, we're playing it. Uh, Frank I Sinatra. I don't think Sharon Osborne uh, is, is, is supporting him these days. No, I don't think that either one of them need support. I think they're both financially well off. I can yeah, guarantee you my opinion from financial. what I know. I'm talking emotional support. Yeah, well, no, no. She, no, I think she she was on The View I, talking about him. She was. Yeah, I know, but I think they, I don't know. Remember they split for a while and she left and I, I don't know. I don't think, I think that they, they came back just for the fact of, uh, TV and uh, and media coverage, I think. But well, uh, so really? supposedly, if uh, if everything continues to go well as it has, uh, he's actually going to start going back on tour uh, as early as March 9th. Really? Wow. Uh, he is he is, he is uh, completely breathing on his own without any any help from machines at at home. Uh, their son Jack also gave a brief update saying he's doing much better. Yeah. I think All right, we cool. we're going to bring Dawson back because he's looking sad. Yeah, bring him back. Uh, he has something else to talk about. He brought up about something about AIDS. Let's see what he's uh, talking about. Big Daddy, you know who uh, also entered chat? Who? Our good friend Kevin Neary entered chat. Oh, welcome, Kevin Neary. Yeah, Kevin had some issues last night with his uh, connection. He was going to come live on the commercial last night, but couldn't get connected. Yeah, Kevin's here. Nancy's here. 
Well, Nancy, my Nancy's, Nancy's my got Nancy. full battery, right? <laughs> Let's hope. I hope everybody's got full, full battery and a mason jar. Yeah. You can't do this show in just one charge alone, folks. Can't do it. It's impossible. No. We suck too much power. We suck too much power. What's going sure. on? Did you understand, uh, Dawson, why I put you in the penalty box? Yes, I did. You, you got a time out. You, you have brought our show up a notch. Uncle Bruno, well, not really necessarily Uncle Bruno. He doesn't bring our show up a notch, but he sure is as entertaining as can be. Ryan certainly brought my show up 10 notches. But Dawson, I, I you got to... My phone is like busted. Like it, it's messing up. No more, no more getting handsy with the phone, Dawson. We need a sponsorship know, you know. from a phone company. We need phones for everybody. I need uh, Kevin Neary to have a, a a Wi-Fi signal wherever he is. Same as thing much for as I paid AT and T this last year. They just sent me free phones. I mean, it's bad. What about the HIV guy that got cured? Is that yes, we're going to talk about? He got a bone marrow transplant from someone that was HIV resistant. Resistant and it sent him into full remission. Two years. Yeah, I don't know anything about the AIDS virus, and, and I was know that done, was that done in the states or was that it done was in Britain? In, that, it was done in Britain. Okay, yeah, it was, it was overseas because exactly. the states are still not recognizing that that procedure. I because think. Do you right? know how much money they make? How much money that medicine is? It's a fortune. That's why they're not doing. That's why they. Exactly. That's, Right, it's big farm, big pharmacy, big pharma, big big money for them. I mean, sad because I mean, at what the cost of people? What are we cattle? Well, speaking of cattle, um, uh, Kevin Neary wants uh, us to microchip him so he could just get a Wi-Fi signal from his wrist or something. <laughs> Uncle wow. Bruno, is, is there something that's uh, distracting you? Yes, I, I am. I am watching oh, a, TV, oh. a, t a TV program. Of course you Maybe are. Does Dallas in honor of the Alamo? <laughs> you got Pornhub on the big screen, do you? No, I have a friend of mine that's on Deal or No Deal. Oh, really? nice. She didn't do but, well though. The so case it make a does she have a it's case a or is it it's a, a contestant? Re no, she's a, she's a re she's a contestant. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought the same thing. I figured Bruno would know some of the hotties holding the cases too. I see where you're going with that, Dawson. Yeah, they are some. Awesome. They are some looking women on that show wasn't megan markle a case girl yeah she was yeah that was her was claim to fame. yeah they're gonna, bring, they're gonna bring her back for a royal uh deal or no deal i guess when i heard her and the queen no <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah Loser. Loser. Hello. Um, kevin says uh what did he say he says uh, a cure uh makes more money than the treatment yeah our, and he, our, and he, our, and he our, says he could prove it with math. Yes, you can, but you put the pharmacies out of business. In your life, I mean, you would want to like cure it no matter how much it costs. I mean, it's your life, you know. And some people get it, and they, you know, for blood transfusions or you know, people that are vengeful, not taking social responsibility, and admitting they have the virus, so they're taking it out passive aggressively on other people for their mistakes. See, that's right. wrong. I mean, they're using it as a weapon almost, you know, and. I have a friend who got, she didn't get AIDS, but she got something that, you know, it's like the jelly of the month club, you know, you can't get rid of it. It just keeps coming back. And um, he, she got it from this guy that literally got it and he was just angry. So he gave it to like 15 girls before finally they they got together and formed a little support group, you know, and finally they got the it word out. After him. Yeah, they, they got the word out. So he wouldn't do it to anybody else, but he was doing it on purpose. And that's, that's being... That's a crime almost, you know? Yeah. Kind of well, it's not, it's, not, it's not almost a crime. It is a crime. It is a crime. I think, weapon, I, think, you know I, mean? I think people have been prosecuted for that, that have had AIDS that willingly, yeah. have, you know, have... have well, that uh, actually uh, that actually made mainstream media uh, through Law & Order, actually. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's sad because, I mean, why should others die at the expense of people that made mistakes and, you know, they're, they're angry about it? So, and actually, you can get... you can the medicine now makes it where you can take a blood test and it shows you do not have the virus. You don't have HIV. AIDS doesn't show period. So they, you know, puts it in kind of remission, but it's not really in remission. It's still there. So why, why would we do that? You know, and then just, or that, you know, and then just allow them to, you know, they it's just wrong that or that pill that you can take instead of using a condom and it kills it in your body. Oh, that's safe. 
you know that's so retarded you know i'm sorry I, yeah, you know, I'm like, 20 years 20 years later you find out that that pill kills you exactly i mean i'm like well, that, well, yeah. i see the card two blood tests you know i mean i want proof you know today um, i wrote i wrote my uh representative tara Tuhill about uh pennsylvania and cannabis and wanting it to be recreational and also to allow people like veterans and and people poor or actually everybody because it infringes on our freedoms for people to be able to grow that plant if they choose as long as laws are in place like for al like alcohol to keep it away from kids and um undeveloped brains and whatnot no sell when you, you know no selling and stuff like that right Right. Which you're never going to listen from what I'm reading about, because I do with Grower X. Shout out to Grower X, who's been on the show still more times than any. No, that's not true. Uncle Bruno's definitely been on the show now more. And, and Ryan, you're a co host, so you really yeah. can't yeah, get cannabis it. Cannabis is better than Oxycontin or fentanyl that, I mean, it will kill you. I mean, you know, you're right. addicted and then turn to heroin. I mean, it is so, you know, so much better for pain. And I just I don't understand. Again, it's money, I, you know. You know, they, it's money. It's pharmacy money. money. Came up pharmacy with the, money. Yeah. No, all, just, all these politicians, if you look at these politicians' portfolios, guaranteed they're all in Johnson and Johnson. They're all in um, the Lord big Pharma, pharmacy. Yeah, yeah, big Pfizer, pharmacy. Yeah. Big, exactly. Pfizer. All the big pharmacy companies. All those guys have their have big holdings in those in yeah. those companies. I went to the doctor today and got you know my medicine was like ten dollars, five dollars, five dollars. The cough medicine it had you know, some hydrocodone in it or whatever, because I'm allergic to the kind with vinegar in it, was a hundred and like thirty-nine dollars. And I bought two cupcakes and the register went dee -dee -dee -dee. And she was like, Oh, I'm supposed to congratulate you. You've won something free. And I was like, What? She goes, You get one of these cupcakes for free. And I was like, oh, Yeah, it's a hundred and thirty-five dollar cupcake. Woohoo! And I was like, Yes, score. And she was like, So you paid you Dawson. paid your your insurance allowed you to pay ten and they bill the insurance company a hundred and thirty something bucks? No, the, no, the syrup alone was hundred and thirty bucks. You insurance paid hundred and thirty for the syrup. Wow. Yeah. Kevin Neary says that uh, my representative says that she's all for it. But Kevin, I want to make sure that she's all for the uh, like the states that allow personal grows, like say up to four to six plants per patient, um, meaning you could have like three in flower stage and three in veg stage and constantly rotate that number. Um, actually, I really would like it to where it's just a, a plant you could plant next to your tomatoes because, you know, if you're a good parent, which again, Dummies ruin it for people. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a good parent, you're going to teach your children properly. There's a lot of other things we teach them not to do, like drink gasoline and uh, things like that, you know. Stick your so, finger in the socket, the electric socket. Right. That's like a basic that. one. No forks in the socket. Ryan, what else do we teach our kids? Uh, you know, don't use illicit drugs. <laughs> don't <laughs> run with scissors. Don't, don't run with scissors. That's don't correct. Scissors. You know, uh, don't swear. <laughs> when you right when uh, you know when you're using fireworks use you know like use try a to keep use. try to keep all your fingers together you know, when, you, when you use fireworks go big or go home <laughs> when, I, when i was younger okay. i told the kid to go play in the road he did i mean my bad and then i liked a girl gonna... with a pair of scissors now john <laughs> is a professional writer okay but i'm gonna put his comment up just to show people what i don't want and i'm not this is not a dig on you john because you are a professional but this does not work for making the screen now maybe he didn't want to make the screen but here's what happens when i look at that the whole show disappeared gracious the whole show but let's see what it says yeah, but, but we can read but we can read it afterwards so that's not a problem it could be a great comment i always read all the comments uh, that I can usually as I'm falling asleep, I just kind of scroll through. Like, did you notice the people trying to help you, Dawson, last night with your throat? Nancy yeah, was throwing you. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Nancy. Throat. Tried it. Coconut that was water cool. an acquired taste. I mean, but yeah, it, it worked kind of. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, and John just told me it's a reply. Well, how the hell would I know that, John? <laughs> okay. so anyway, ground rules for the new show. If you're writing a book, it can't make the screen. But I just, I was just really poking fun at John. John and I are friends, and uh, um, he's a he, he's a guy who covers hockey, and 
and stuff for years. So if you're into hockey and you know, you are Bruno. Boston, Boston Bruins are hot right now. Boston yeah, he's probably covering them and writing stories. He's been writing about hockey, professional hockey for a long time. So Did you hear about Alex Trebek? Now that's another thing. Yes, Thanks. Alex Trebek is suffering stage four pancreatic cancer. He's that's going to continue hosting the show, and he's got a positive outlook. But I mean, he's yeah, at seventy two, seventy three, pancreatic cancer. Stage what are we sending links to, Ryan? Uh, Jennifer. Really? Mm-hmm. Nice. The beautiful Jennifer. Yes. Oh, bring her up. I'll 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 back down. You'll back down. Well, wait a second. Let's see if she makes it in Big Daddy's back office. Back to our man. If, I, if the link I sent her doesn't work, again, just try sending yours. Uh, send yours. Uh, maybe that'll work. Well, the problem, too, is she has to have the be live. So she, she has already to has be- it. She oh, downloaded okay. it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. But did you follow the rules? I said my, my website has rules and, and explains it clearly, but I was redundant and kind of said it the same thing three different ways it goes also, on uh, also robert tucker said he uh, downloaded the app if you need filler for the show if we, yeah we might need some, what time how long have we been going for here this is a good show i don't want it to uh, end. We're, we're we're up an hour and 47 minutes yeah, so that, almost, it's almost about long. quarter to tw- quarter to, to 11 to now robert if you want to he's got stories he's awesome does he have a, if he has a good story he's i'll bring veteran, him up you know all that stuff yeah you know that jennifer is welcome on my show He's Anytime. A, so if she's Robert, a gut Robert lover, if she's got a veteran. Wait a minute. She's Robert Tucker's a veteran, right? He's Did a veteran, veteran, former peace officer, EMT. Paramedic. Paramedic. He, 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 he orbited the earth. This Good Tucker going, guy. Robert Tucker. Yeah. Thank you for your services. Yeah. Amen. Thank you not only for your service, but anybody in any of the branches. Yes, of thank you. Yep. The Big Daddy Road Show has been supporting you since show number one. And guess what? You goofballs, we're approaching our 500th live show. Wow. Between podcasting and Friday Night Free For All, Real Talk with Big Daddy. Uh, help me out. What else is there? Um, it used uh, to be a Sunday chill. Remember the Sunday chill? The Sunday yeah. chill. Yeah. So if you guys want to go back. Sessions, that was your number one show. Uh, you, I would beg to differ. I'm sorry. By, but, the, by the way, we do have a YouTube channel. Which I just posted in the comments below. Yes, and by the way, I got a Subscribe. message today, Dawson, from YouTube saying, "Hey, your page is starting to get some activity, really, and boards and shit." So, but I think we only have twenty six subscribers. I had an old YouTube from the old show, like you know Bruno's mentioning, and I deleted that, and we had like all kinds of subscribers on that one. But Maybe Jesus you can Christ, get on Apple, Apple if anybody comes on my show and wants to peg me. It's an immediate banishment from the show. There's nobody pegging Big Daddy. Pegging. Pegging. Look it up. Don't even talk about it on the show. Look it up. We're going to reserve that conversation for a Friday Is that like night turkey basting? Uh, <laughs> we'll go with that. It's kind of like turkey basting. It's <laughs> pretty much turkey basting. Yes. Your, ba- your turkey will be basted. Uh, folks, this is the midweek uh, mashup. Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> show number one uh, on the lower corner of the Brady Bunch squares. You got Uncle Bruno, uh, Dawson Hicks from Texas down below me, and my sidekick Ryan. Apparently, the beautiful Jennifer is going to try and get live, and Uncle Bruno's uh, saying he'll take off. So, and if uh, somebody else uh, bails eventually, but I would like uh, I would like Dawson to meet the beautiful Jennifer. I just get the feeling that they're gonna. Make some sparks. I really think that she's gonna dig you, and I know she already takes on Bruno. So, but I also mention uh, we mentioned it last night on the long-winded commercial. My friends at the Broken Glass Tavern. Not that I'm trying to get free drinks or anything. I'm not trying to like get a couple free free beers out of the house. But I want to mention uh, that my friend Donnie D is playing uh, Thursday night there, um, and he karaoke. does karaoke show. And he's really good at it, just like Jack Neary. But Jack's up in a different, sh- like, city. And uh, if you're doing nothing tomorrow night, come out. I might come out. I don't know. Depends on how we're feeling. But uh, it's a good time. Do you guys know that uh, last week with Donnie D, Big Daddy did his first karaoke ever? Sweet Caroline? No. We did a – we were challenged at the bar. I remember, Michael, I posted his pictures of his uh, birthday – and his cake and everything, and he, he was drinking from up high. Yes, um, yes. We were challenged by four women to a sing-off of a meatloaf song, and we crushed it. Donnie D gave us the trophy. 
the, the dashboard, dashboard light. Paradise by the dashboard, the dashboard light. light. Right. That's the best song Ooh. that Loaf ever did. Here's um, here's trivia. Who was the famous baseball commentator that was in that? He was from the Yankees, wasn't he? Yeah, wasn't it Phil? <laughs> was that Phil Rizzuto? Phil Rizzuto. I bet you that's right. I can't remember. I think it I is. Think that's right. <laughs> Phil Rizzuto. Harry, Harry such Harry. an iconic, such an iconic uh, voice. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of iconic uh, stories, before we, first of all, I want to stress, folks, because I know there's a lot of dudes out there getting pretty excited that the beautiful Jennifer might be making an appearance. It's been at least a year. Um, before that happens, we also, Ryan and I, uh, well, it was actually Ryan's idea. We have a story about the iconic uh, service person kissing the nurse. He had passed away as well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> me too. Movie. So we're going to show some pictures of that at the end of the show. We'll probably end with that, Ryan. Don't let me forget. All right. Because that's, uh, but you know, God forbid, I bet you if a sailor came home and kissed a woman today, there'd be all kinds of like activity like, oh, yeah, so yeah. Good. well, be, fun, fun fact about that picture is the, uh, the guy, the sailor in that picture was actually there with his girlfriend. No oh, shit. Really? Yes. That's which ended up, which ended up being his wife. Right. They got married. Right. That's the story. The guy, he was with them and they just, he grabbed the nurse, the nurse either grabbed him or he, or he grabbed her and they had a big kiss because the well, wall. Was this over. day and age, she'd either shoot him, mace him or stab him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> then, True. True. Yeah, if it happened nowadays, that's correct. There'd be a total different world. I know, well, right? if you actually look at the photo, you could see his uh, girlfriends in the background. Yes, the, the sad part. The Smiling. sad part is the the, the the statue in Sarasota. There, someone friggin' defaced Thank you, it. Renee. That's, that sucks. Yeah, how about Renee saying this was Thank my you, first Renee. Wednesday night show? How about this, Renee? It's our first Wednesday night show too. <laughs> this is everybody's first. first. We're cracking our cherries. Okay, so Jennifer says I'm trying. Uh, I have the app downloaded, but I don't know how to get on. Just tell her to hit the hit the, no. hit the link. Hit the link. Okay, you tell her. Go ahead. Hit the link. Okay, Uncle Bruno, can I, with all due respect, sir, yeah. can I stop you there because you're giving her bogus information. Okay, beautiful Jennifer, if you did download the Be Live TV app, you need to turn your phone off, and then I will send you the appropriate link. Every show we do has its own dedicated link. So what happens a lot of times is people will go to another link or a link that's on that website for a sample that takes you to a fictitious show and people sit saying, I'm sitting in your back office, Big Daddy. No, you're not. It's very simple. You download the app, then you reboot your phone. Do not go back to the original download link. You go to the link Big Daddy sends you or Ryan or Uncle Bruno sends you. So Jennifer, you're halfway there and I'm rooting for you. So turn your phone off. We'll jibber jabber. We got time. You're worth the wait. And then when you reload, <laughs> that sounds dirty. When you reboot your phone, I'm going to send you the link. You click on that. It says go live and you'll be, well, you'll be ready. You'll be in the uh, batter's up box. Can I just Bruno, say that um, we Bruno, can we Bruno, Dawson. Sorry. I just, I'm not finished with Uncle Bruno. Last night on my commercial, he completely, he was saying my show was at 9 a.m. He was saying uh, 9 a.m. He was saying it's on Sundays. Uh, no. And now, okay, so really, I, all I want you to do from here on out, Bruno, is promote Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't want you teaching people how to get live. Well, if you let me finish, I was going to say you had to go to the link. That you oh, said. Oh, you now we said. Now we said. That would have been. That's what I'm trying to say. But you cut me well, off. Yeah. That's okay. You explained it perfectly. Well, yeah, because I've only had like you know, uh, two hundred yeah, people. You, come on because my because phone. and you've also had idiots like uh, my buddy Froblo sitting in the back office saying he's in the back office and he's in some yeah, other and, office. And Frodo? Really, and the funny thing is, Froblo, oh, yeah. He's He's pretty popular oh, on this show. Of Frodo, like Baggins. Like, I was yeah, like, Lord Frodo. Rain, Frodo Frodo's on the show. Oh, He's on the show next week. Sweet. Frodo. Okay. Frodo's doing, Frodo's doing his own show with some guy. They're doing, um, they're doing like outlaw music and stuff or whatever they're doing. Okay. So. She's asking for the link right now, guys. Let me send that to her. You guys should chat while I take care of the beautiful Jennifer. Yeah. What I would like to say is we all get along and coexist. And the one person 
this political season I could not get along with was that former Hillary delegate that was a Democrat. <laughs> so I want to thank all of y'all guys for being awesome and the viewers for being like so open-minded and accepting because the one person literally that I can think of in the last five years was a former Hillary delegate and a Democrat. Wow. <laughs> I was like, so y'all are great. I mean, you know, y'all are great. I mean, but I was, and a Texan. I mean, I was like, wow. Well, the big, the big thing on my show is I want to hear from everybody and exactly. we can have different it should of, be, you know? opinions. Of course we can have a difference of opinions, but it's that's not going to be anything like that. You know? Yeah. yeah it's not going to be like that crap you see at college universities, people, you know, it's just pipe yeah, that. We're, we're not, and we're not going to come and hunt you down if you're not. a No, no, there's no hunting. Yeah. No hunting. Yeah. No, there will be defense if you attack. I mean, if you come yeah. at us. I feel threatened, you know, and then you can just, you know. They... So, so wait a minute, wait a minute. We were talking about that when you were put into the penalty box about into. So what is the rule in Texas if somebody Texas, comes into your house? You have to have like, and literally I have my trees outside marked with like circles, purple paint, meaning no trespassing. So the cops see somebody on my property and I'm asleep. They, they're allowed to come and like, you know, take care of it Um, in Texas. I think it's like 150 yards away from your house. You have to, you have like a no trespassing sign or you have the colors marked, you know, and then you, you're allowed to shoot. Um, Interesting. Public, basically, you yell, I feel threatened twice. I feel threatened, you know, please get away from me. I feel threatened. Then if you verbally warn them, then you can shoot. Um, Yeah. Texas, everybody has a gun. You know, I actually, Correct. in the middle of Easter service, my uncle's church, I stepped on my cousin's balloon mid mid you know invitational prayer and everybody ducked Bam! and the preacher was like lord you know and i was like oh my gosh and looked down i was like you son of a bitch you know and my uncle was like he was laughing you know my aunt goes well thank god you didn't get shot everybody has a gun here and my uncle is like in the choir you know laughing his ass off and i'm like humiliated after the church service preacher goes man i was scared crapless thank god you weren't shot you know <laughs> thank you you're letting That's you know, awesome your son story. my little cousin who's six you know have a balloon underneath my foot so every time i go now i'm like look under the, the pew they make fun of me because i was at the front of the church you know whatever i'll turn around everybody's like uh excuse me uh breaking news Uncle she's Bruno. in she's in Good. you can come back later at the end of the show but uh go handle the chat for me Perfect. I love it. Not only is she in, but those those breastuses you were looking for. Oh Lord. Uh, it's not me. Don't kill the messenger of Dawson. It was she Uncle made some Bruno. Chicken? But, yeah, she made some chicken and we're about to see her chickens. Awesome. All right, Uncle Bruno. Kill it. You She's gonna kill it. No problem. You can come, you can come back. All right, cool. All right. All right, Ryan, what a show tonight, huh? It's a good one. It really is. I knew it was going to be. I, I get these feelings. Okay. Uh, me and my damn feelings. Okay, Jennifer, you ready? Give me a thumbs up. She's talking to me. She, I can't hear you because you're not live yet. Give me a thumbs up, Jennifer, if you're ready to come live on the Big Daddy Roadshow midweek mashup. Did you hear me? Oh, man. I wonder if she has a helper there. She have to turn down her volume on the device. Right, you know, let me just bring her live and hope for the best. Here we go. Hi, Shut up, can you see me? Hey, hey how are you? Hi, guys. How are Hi. you? She's Good, adorable. How are you? I am, oh, aren't I? I she's adorable. You guys are adorable, too. I've been watching you all night. I that's even have my own watch party going on. And then I couldn't figure out how to get on this thing, but I finally did. So thank you for sending me the link. No problem. Those simple instructions, right? Once you calm down, very easy. Yes, that's what happened. You've got an excellent Wi-Fi signal. I do, apparently. And as always, you're dressed to perfection. Thank you. I appreciate when the ladies doll it up a little. Thank you. I'm just chilling in my jams, actually. Now, let me ask you something. All yeah. those are your jammies? Yeah. Really? <laughs> my hair's up look at me yeah i'm like this is just a black comfy so what shirt. what possessed you to come live was it that hug you got from that big tall guy last night or what first of all yes well yes and we were supposed to have that medium on or the tarot card reader i know right are we gonna yeah. have her on because i totally want to i have tarot cards 
I'm not good at Well, it. here's the thing. What the beautiful Jennifer's saying is last night she introduced me to a friend. Now, I've been trying to get this famous tarot card reader from Australia on the show, but Jennifer has a friend who does a special kind of tarot card reading where the cards pop up out of the deck. In other words, the one I see, she shuffles them, and then I guess mm -hmm. – so is her name Deb, Jennifer? It's – Debbie does readings. <laughs> How cool is that? Yes. Debbie actually, does readings. I'm glad I'm not the only one who picked up on that. I know. Okay. Because Tom didn't want to say it because he's like, first of all, let me, let me tell you what I want to talk about in a minute. I want to talk about everybody being so, like uh, – sensitive nowadays it's ridiculous let's yeah. go there okay, okay. Go ahead. it is but right, go ahead. The, well, debbie does readings actually i cut her on my hairstylist and i cut her daughter's hair and really? tom came in out of nowhere and he was trying to like sneak up on me but out of nowhere i felt his energy and i was like <gasps> she I felt my so energy excited to see him and he's like standing there screaming like yes get on my show and i was like thank god it's about time you invited me because I can never find him. Oh, my God. You are... I don't listen. do Facebook anymore. It's like, well, I don't know what, you know? What are you big on? What social media do you do? I, I actually... I actually, It's so weird. Like, I've kind of been, like, off the grid a little bit. I do um, Snapchat. 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 You add me on Snapchat. You'll have to. Oh, uh, you can't handle her Snapchat, Dawson. Awesome. <laughs> you can Please. handle it. I think you... I, I don't know. You were talking about religion before I heard all of it. But... I don't want to talk about religion, um, and I am sober because, okay, the only thing I'm going to say about religion is, yes. Hi, Bruno. Thank you. Um, I It is Ash Wednesday, and so I am sober because, you know, the whole Lint thing. And I yeah. do it in respect for my yeah. family, for my father who passed away. So um, it's... You know. Not only not only that, beautiful Jennifer, but if you do recall, I had to throw out two fantastic shows we did because you and I both hit the wine a little too heavy. And, you know, I try to tell people it's OK to come on the show. OK, like, yeah, I might have 13 beers in a row one night. It's very rare, but I still finish the show. Yeah, I know. I drank like, like I mean, a box you know, of that's cool. wine. A box of wine. A box. Franzia. Yeah. Yes, awesome. it was. Yes, yes. Yeah. It was a great time that night. It's just that the show was shot. I mean, at some point. Ryan, what's our policy? No drinking and living. Yeah, you don't listen to it, though. No, well, but I'm the bar. <laughs> I got to get some perks. I'm the one working eight hours producing these shows. <laughs> Jennifer, you're making my night. These guys, I've been thanking them for being, you know, we finally got everybody clicking. Uh, by the way, really quick, Robert Tucker, you're in the back office, but it's not working, sir. Could you disconnect from the show entirely, possibly reboot your phone? I'm not seeing any video from you whatsoever. Oh, I, I right. promise. So I don't know you guys. I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay, I, no, let me put the names up. Uh, you're looking at Dawson Hicks from uh, Texas. Hi, Dawson. Hi, What's how up? Are you? And you're looking at my sidekick, Ryan. He's from Hayes Town. Hi, Ryan. What's going on? And you know who I am. Big Wait, Daddy. That's okay. Ryan's in the red shirt. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I don't think you're like. It's kind of like watching one of those old uh, Asian films where like the words are like not working with the mouth, right? Well, it could be your connection, but you know what? That gives me a good time to take a break. Uh, Ryan and Dawson, please talk to my friend, beautiful Jennifer, and introduce yourselves and get to talking, and I'll be back. Okay, Robert, you're good now. You got a video. Uh, I'll be back in just a few seconds. Uh, Jennifer, please don't leave before I okay. come back. Okay. So All what right, do you do? You. Oh, my God. This is so cool. So I can only – I mean, I could see myself a little bit, but I you can cut see hair? you. Yes, I cut hair. That's awesome. Can you hear me? Or, or can yeah, I, I can hear yes, you. Yes, we could hear you. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. I'm, I'm kind of loud. Yes, I love – I'm a I'm a hair artist. You have to ask. Really? I, yes, I – we're done some fat shoots in Austin. I, I did makeup. Love hair. I, do you make? Do you do makeup? I used to. I went to the Aveda Institute, and then <gasps> I did Mary Kay for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It was Twenty no thirty third in my national division over twenty seven thousand women. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I went to Aveda yeah, also. I'm yeah. Aveda, you know, trained and certified. All really? Yeah, for twenty years. Congratulations! Yeah, Thanks. we we met um. 
John, somebody that does hair for a Veda or something, we went to his hair show and I was an SD. So yeah, I did that. And so, yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've been certified by Goldwell and wow, that's awesome. like so many different companies. And I love, I mean, I love them right now. Um, the color line I'm working with is Wella and I, I absolutely love it because back in the day there were like this Sonia and Chris Dove and they, they did this like amazing, you know, collaboration together and they, I mean, I just, I really love it. I, I do they have a blue black? Color. Of course they do. What do you think? Yeah. I, See my natural, my natural color is blue black, but now that I've gotten older, it's so faded. Jealous. So jealous. Yes. So yeah, that's I, happened to me too. Yeah. And, it turns red. <laughs> Like instead of gray, it turns like dark red. You have so, to yeah, use, so I've, yeah. Yeah, I'm always looking for a good blue black. I'll give you my little secret and tips if you like message me at or on, add me on Snapchat or whatever. Yes, I will. I will. <laughs> so, all right. So my topic that I want to talk about because I have no idea about like everything everybody was talking about. Like, I mean, I not that I don't have an idea. I just don't want to talk about politics or religion or yeah. Star yeah, Wars movies or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, my big thing is everybody is so oversensitive. Like, yes. what happened to um, loving Opinions? yourself and yeah. like not giving a shit? I don't give a shit what people think about me. I mean, I don't obviously. I I I don't get where people lost that whole um, self, like. What's the word? The, the courage to have the courage of conviction and like say it to people's faces instead of on social media. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's that. Yeah. There, but I, I mean, like. But people sue now. I mean, like people are just so like. There's so many advocacy groups. You know, it's ridiculous. Like. Right. Being gay, like I don't like the fact that you know there are like massive you know people waving rainbow flags in people's faces and griping at them being oppressed. You know, I live in small town Texas. I was adopted, Hispanic gay you name it and i'm like you know i coexist with everybody down here not everybody agrees with my lifestyle but it doesn't mean i'm gonna hate them and force them to try to believe it exactly you know, i respect their opinion exactly you know, but i'm gonna tell them that you know and i'm gonna be respectful enough not to push it in their face you know it takes three bad eggs you know or one bad egg to ruin an entire population same thing exactly. goes with, you know, everything you know so. but exactly and, and this is how i feel like as a woman okay i don't care i mean i have so many friends that are you know, whatever, everything and whatever this whole, like everything, you know what I mean? And whatever, it's just, it's about their soul. It's about the person. It's, yeah. I don't care, you know, you know, if you think you're a tiger or a lion or whatever the hell you believe you are and that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And as long as you're not breaking a law or, you know, hurting another person, you, you know, laws. it's I'm cool. Italian. I don't, I have friends that break laws and, you know, who cares? To each his own, you know, to each his own, you know, right. that's their my, life. That's their my decision. point is like with women, like, okay, enough, like calm down, like exactly. let's calm down, like with this whole Me women empowerment, movements. like why couldn't yeah. we like, it just empower, just empower everybody. Like everybody, exactly. And just just women. Like, yeah. Everybody be their own. You know, like okay, everybody's saying authentic self right now. Well, what, what the hell was everybody being well, before? What, what were they being before? Yeah, the Me Too movement though is like I ruining know. people's lives. It's ruining people's lives and careers. And I'm like, it happened 25, 30 years ago. Why didn't you report it then when you were in high school? I mean, we not should not hold something over somebody's head that they did when they were 17 years old. Exactly. You know, like Agreed. I mean, yeah. So that's just my opinion. No, I agree. I agree. And and it's like. You know, every, okay, just like I heard Big Daddy saying before that, um, you know, there's women are whatever, they're, they're, the whole Gillette commercial, did you hear about that? That they, oh, there was this And big, the, Gucci, the Gucci sweater and the, the, the charcoal mask and the, you oh, know, God but Delta Burke came on, you know, designing women and singing blackface, you know, the Supremes. And it was funny, you right. know, but. It's you know. like, what, like. Hi, Robert Tucker, how are you? <laughs> I Doing know, good, Dustin. Bottom of his face. I like your beard. You, I, I'd like to trim it up a little bit, but that, but like Thank that's you, what we. Think. Yeah, I'm a little scruffy today. I have. I think you need to like. Stuff. We need to teach him how to like get into the um, selfie position mode. You know, you got to pick your camera up, buddy. Yeah, your camera. Lift your camera. Pick up. Your yeah. Camera. Like, uh, your nostrils. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Now we can see your. Now, yeah, but. 
like move it a little more away from you or something. Yeah, yeah. I could totally teach selfie poses. So Ryan, what do you think? Ryan? <laughs> like, what do you think about tolerance? Because you know that when not, I was joking with you, you know, and you know, you could have been like, "Oh, get off my show," but you weren't. You just kind of, you know, you joked back. You shot it back at me. Oh well, yes, like, it, it's know? not my show. Exactly, but, I mean, <laughs> but even though you know you're an individual, you know, and, yeah, like I was giving you a hard time, but you knew that. You knew I wasn't like. You oh, know, I don't. Serious. I don't. I don't really care. Yeah. It doesn't. None of that bothers me. See, that's awesome. That's the way you should be. You know, I mean, like Bruno teases me. I'm like, you know, it's all cool. You just roll off. Speaking of teasing Dawson, ask him what he got for a present. Oh, gosh. I got stamps. <laughs> I got, like, rainbow stamps. And, like, you know, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, on this campaign that I'm working on, you know, in, like, Florida, I'm working with this guy who, like, um, <laughs> gosh, he lives in another town. But, I mean, he... Good night, sweetheart. I'm like, I'm not your sweetheart. My mother doesn't even call me sweetheart, you know? And like, <laughs> he's like, good night, dumpling. I'm like, you know, I'm like, just thank you. You know, so finally I was like, well, hun. And he was like, that shut him up. You know? Because <laughs> he's, like, you know? he's married, you know, and he's like, Mr. Tough Guy. And I'm like, you know, and he's like, what? I'm like, don't call me dumpling. Buddy is the word. Buddy, I can't stand. Like, buddy. I'm like, no, I'm not your buddy. I don't know you. You know, like, I mean, <laughs> seems to be the straight guy's, you know, nickname for me. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking like a Texas Ranger. I know people at Alleged- Starbucks, buddy. Is, I'm like, I say allegedly because I've I've learned this that on okay, I watch like E News. E everything is e, if if I'm watching TV, it's E. You know, uh, if for anybody that doesn't know that, that's like the pop culture, like stay relevant, blah blah blah. That you know, yeah. Big Daddy's always busting my balls about, but like. You know, he calls me the beautiful Jennifer, and I appreciate that. Like, what? What's yeah, I know, that? right? I love that. I'm like, thank yeah. you. How is baby? It's well, darling, you do like, good here in Texas. Oh, yeah. thank you, darling. That's cute. I like that. Yeah, that's cute. So what we do but, in Texas, darling, hun. Yeah, I know. Sweetheart. And, oh, and that's the other thing. People get so upset about like being called like, okay. There's an there's an older man. And he works in like an area where I work and every night, like he's such a, he's a greeter at the door. He's, he's like such a nice man. And, and now if anybody like this whole movement that's going on with the women, like he always says, good night. He gives me a hug and he like, you know, pats the back of my neck, like have a good night. Like women get so upset about this. Like, Why? like, well, I mean, is it like a pattern? Is it like a, like a, no, he's no, he's an old you know? man. No, he's. You know what? I'm like, I could st- if he would offer me a massage. I right there at the door. I yeah, like, I mean, it's probably you know, the generational thing too. Shoulders, you know, yes. like I mean, yeah. Like, what's the big deal? Like, what happened to touch anymore? Like, what happened to? That's why I love what I do because I get to. Well, I'm a, like a psychiatrist. You know, the hair. The, oh, yeah. The therapy. We totally are. I mean, you know, and I I love to listen to people and. They just, they pour their hearts out, and I really do yeah. truly care about people. Plus, I get to do my art. It's like. Yeah, I'm a psych major. Yeah. So. But, but there's so many people. Oh, I thought you were fixing to say you're a psychotic, but. No, but I've got a, I've got a bubble. <laughs> I'm like Glenda the Good Witch of the North. I have a bubble, and I'm in Austin. This homeless guy runs with me, gives me a hug, and I'm like, you know, I'm like. Then he's like, well, hands me a button. He wants me to buy a button that says I'll love deaf people for $25. I'm like, <laughs> are you afraid? Why are you so afraid of hugs? I, I hug everybody. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, Dawson, tell them about your stalker in Austin. Okay, so Let get this. People get this. touch you. It feels good. People need well, human touch. Well, yeah. But Think I mean, about how good it felt when you did, like, okay, you said you did, like, makeup, esthetician work, even, right? Yes, how yes. good did it make you feel? To just make someone else feel better. Actually, when I did the first facial peel um, and this girl was pregnant, she made some noise. Like the teacher was like, "Somebody's doing it right." I was like, "What the hell is going on?" Oh and yeah. Was, yeah and she was like, "Oh," and I was like, oh, "Women God. love you know, facials better." And I know Big Daddy would totally bust on the facials thing. Yeah, especially the warm one. You know the. the but no, one. no, I don't think I don't think you're getting that one. But like, no, no, the Aveda one. I know. It goes warm. You know, that's when the girl was like, I was like, what the hell? She was pregnant, you know? My bad. He knows what I'm talking about by facials. Oh, oh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You and I know we're talking about 
you know, esthetician work and stuff. Yeah. Which is skincare. So yeah, we love, yeah, that's women actually love that more. Yeah. It's very relaxing. I always fall asleep, you know, and what kind yeah. of skincare do you use? I mean, do you prefer a certain brand or me? Yeah. I always, I, I actually don't, um, I, there's, there's certain things that I like from each company, but I've yeah. learned to look at the ingredients. This is another exactly. thing people don't look at. Like I've, you know, worked with Dermalogica and it's all natural. Aveda actually is not even, you, um, not, they're not even 40% natural probably now, you know, I yeah. mean, because they got bought out by like yeah. L'Oreal. I mean, I wore a fur coat to class one day. They were like, oh. <gasps> What are you doing? I said, it's cold in here. You know, so the next day, a doctor's wife wore a bright orange fur vest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Like, that's what I mean. But but L'Oreal owns them, just like they own 10 million other companies. Yeah. Like, I think they own Armani Exchange. I'm not sure about that. But, like, they own um, Suave. Yeah. Do you know they own Suave? Yeah, I think so. Same company yeah. that owns Aveda. Like, so I'm not, and I love, you know, Aveda products, but I love... Um, there's just different kind of products for everybody. You know, Skin Medica has a dermal repair cream, and I was like, it smells nasty. Yeah. I asked them, and they were like, well, it comes from um, circumcisions from babies. I was like, oh, no wonder it's gross. Like, But the, but yeah, that's like, probably really, well, the weird thing is, yeah. like, it's good for you. milk is yeah. so good. It like, sounds placenta like, is good for your face. But like, of course, mine right. works pretty good. Well, yeah, placenta, a lot of women eat that, like, take the cow. Yeah, it's got is that Bruno over there? <laughs> no, that's. I don't know with the hat is. on. Hold on. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good for you. Um, having a little issue here with two pages running exactly at the same time. <laughs> Oh well, gosh. hi, welcome to the Big welcome Daddy Road Show. Yeah, That's I got to figure out how to stop this one feed and, and start right. the other one. Everybody's welcome here. Yeah. Hi. Where's... Hi. Hi. How you doing? Yeah, we lost people. Uh, Where's Bruno at? Whoa, I didn't know exactly at the same time. All that facial talk. Get back on the who's this? this one feed. <laughs> so that was odd. Yes, it was. <laughs> That's me. I I attract that was odd. I attract people. It's like I have this energy that like attracts people. I'm serious. Look, there he oh. is again. Oh. That was that was John C. It was yeah, uh it, I was it like, came, wow, Ra it came up on our screen on our phones there. <laughs> they were too so busy wait, chatting about facials. Yeah. You know, drop me right on the web, Big Daddy. Come back up. And I'm going to head up to chat. John was having some audio problems. Yeah. Yeah, he had some stuff going on in the background there. Hmm. So what are you two doing? Uh, Where's... Sitting here, sitting here co-hosting a show. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what I'm doing, too. <laughs> I know I'm a guest tonight. That's right. Well. Yeah. So... I like your crucifixes in the back there. You're you're very religious, I see. I actually I'm a pastor. <gasps> that's awesome. That's awesome. That's so cool. I, I I was like, well, I don't want to talk about religion before because you know Well, see, there's a difference. I do not believe in religion. I believe oh. in God and the Bible and you know, just straightforward what he says, but I do not believe in religion and going through the rituals or anything else just to make yourself feel better. Right. I got you. I, I appreciate that. See, this is what I was talking about. Well, Tom wasn't on the show. I'm was sorry. Saying, do you mind I, if I break in? We can't hear you, Tom. I can hear him. What? Can't, I can't. Who else can hear him? All right. I can't hear Real him. quick, Ryan, tell her. Tell her that I'm. I just wanted to pop on my shelf for a second. I can hear. And uh, uh, Pastor Tucker, I could use a pastor in my new church I'm forming called Big Daddy's House of Everything Cool. If you're interested, um, but Uncle Bruno wants to come be a part of this foursome. One thing before I go, Robert, bring your camera down just a little bit, and uh, 
I think Uncle Bruno's excited to talk to Jennifer. So everybody get in the conversation. <laughs> Yay! I've and been waiting for Bruno. And let's please remember, we only have four hours. Facebook will kick us off. So Ryan, tr try to keep the clock for me, like what we're where we're at. We're at uh, um, just about and, two and a half hours. Oh. And I'm going to put John C. Uh, back into the, the circle, okay. too. So after when you guys are ready to bail, somebody, you know, put their hand up and I'll drop you and I'll bring John back up. But Bruno is ready to go. Uh, why, don't, why don't you bring John back up and Bruno, you could drop me for a few. Do you oh, want me to okay. go? Away? No, no. Are you, it took me over a <laughs> You're year. You're the one on the show. Oh, thanks. No. Hey, yeah. wait a second, Pastor. Wait a second. <laughs> He's a pastor. It's okay. He's a Texas cowboy. Uh, listen to me. Do you see the skin? You see this? All right. Ryan Amir Balin. It's, the show's about to be taken over by John, Uncle Bruno, <laughs> the beautiful Jennifer, and Pastor Tucker. Ryan, let's go take a break and grab a beer. I kind of wish Dawson right. had told you a story about um, the homeless guy in Austin. You'd have loved it. He got accosted two weeks in a row by the same homeless guy. What? This John guy did this is my dog. <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry. He, he loves me, see? <laughs> Hi, Bruno. How are you? Hello, I'm Bruno. Doing wonderful. Now this show has gone to a new level. <laughs> my dog on me. Like, this is my guy. He's my little ro He's named Rocco after St. Rocco. Rocco. Yeah, I call him Rocky, but, you know, like after St. Rocco. Mm -hmm. There's John. John's back. You cute. Hello, John. Did you get Hello. Oh, look at out? that puppy. <laughs> that cute? Isn't he cute? <laughs> He's part shepherd and part chihuahua. Look at <laughs> So cute. Beautiful. Cute. Beautiful. It was a rescue, wasn't it? Always. Always. Yes, yes, yes. I always rescue them, yeah. So I was talking about everyone being so sensitive before about everything. Yes, sir. And, you know, like, I don't get, like, I understand. I, I'll agree to disagree with people, but that doesn't mean I don't like them or. Ah, I'm yeah. sorry, Robert. What did you say? I said, did you get your issues worked out? I'm sorry. Is there a conversation going on? What's going on here? No, I don't know what he was talking to John, I think. I think yeah. I'm lagging. Yeah, somebody's lagging. But no, what? I get you on I get you on the sensitive sensitivity. You can't it's like we have to be politically correct twenty four seven when we're out in public. That's ridiculous. Amen. And you know what? It's because Bruno, we can't do it yes, sir. it's not possible for us. We say how we feel and that's it. If somebody doesn't like it, buffalo, <clears throat> right? And it's very tough for us Italians because we're huggy, touchy, feely type of people. Well, That's how we were born and bred. Well, there's that, and there's the fact that when we say something, we don't mean to offend people. We're just saying it like how we feel. Like if they don't like it, like if somebody says something to me, well, if I don't like it, then that's right. That's the, it. The, I don't the, care. Whatever. Right. I had a young lady get mad at me the other day because I waited three seconds and let her through the door before I went in. She got mad at you? Yeah. I can open my own doors. That's what well, she told me. Well, you should have shut that door and you should have said, all right, bitch, then go ahead. That's what I would have done. <laughs> That'd been kind of okay. hard for me to say. <laughs> I just Why? apologized and went on. Well, that's good for you. I mean, I understand now. I know it's it is tough. Like I don't get it. I don't get it. But like, what happened? I think it's because of all this social media. Like nobody talks to people anymore. There's no like. That's why Tom's like, where have you been? Like, I'm just, you know, I I work with hair. I do you know hair all day long, and I love it. And I get to listen to people, and that's that's a blessing. It to me, it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Your best social, your best social media is your clients. Well, there it's that, and it's the fact that I get to, you know, people don't have anyone to talk to anymore, and I feel like because they're afraid of being judged of how they feel, or you know, 
or what they're thinking of doing or what they're doing. And it's like, where did all this judgment? I thought that I thought it was going the other way. You know, like I thought this world was getting better to the point where we weren't going to judge people for what they felt like or what they thought or, you know, yeah, like, and I can't believe somebody got so sensitive. I'm still going back to this whole door thing. Really? <laughs> Do you have do you have clients that will sit in your chair and actually text and stuff while you're doing their hair? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with that. You know me. Come yeah, on. Good, good. I, I go, figured that much. <laughs> here I say, and I was just talking to a friend from Colorado actually last night, and we were talking about this, and he's a bartender at Red Rocks, and he says that he um he does the same thing as I do. I'm like you know, if somebody's on their phone or whatever and I'm like, I'll let you finish that because you know what? I got shit to do. I have other people who will sit there and be present in the moment and, you know, actually tell me what they want done or, you know, like if they, you know, I mean, I usually could figure out what they want done, but have it's, that's the respect is gone. There's like no respect. That's what it is. This, exactly. this whole like, you know, put your phone down, like, you know what I mean? Like, put your phone down. Erica Badu sang this song, and it's beautiful. I love it. And it's called Phone Down. And, you know, it's like... Yeah, engage and laugh. Yes, like, exactly. with people. Like, and that's, you know, somebody, like, I actually, I couldn't get on this thing before. So I added, like, a watch party, and I was trying to talk, and somebody said, like, what's my platform about... Really, it's it's about that. I mean, my whole my whole goal is number one, respect others. You know, and when, engage. Yes, exactly. You know, and let them. But I mean, yeah. If somebody's sitting in my chair with their phone, I'm like, you know, I'll let you get finished with that. I put it like that, like in a nice way. I'm not going to be right. You know, right. Right. And then they're and then it kind of like wakes them up like they, oh. they get it. Yeah, they get it right away. <laughs> oh, like, oh, good. like I just schooled them or something. But I just can't believe adults do this. Like. Or, or if somebody there, this one person said, oh, it's not that important. I'm just texting. Well, guess what? Am I less important? I'm right. cutting your hair. Guess what? Guess what I could do to you? <laughs> All right. Exactly. I, mean, I can really mess up your life with your hair, but I won't. <laughs> never, never, never. There you but go. I... Tom just put up a thing. The best apology is changed behavior. Wow. You should like write. Did yes. you like write that down or read that off? Do you have cue cards going on, Bruno? You do tonight. <laughs> no, no, no. It's No, Tom posted it. Can you see that? He just posted that. Oh, I, I saw something. Yeah, he posted that. That was one of his memes. One oh. Of his photos, one of his photos. Oh, well, wait, repeat that again to me. Tell me again, that again. I'm like it's a Diet a, Pepsi addict. The best apology is changed behavior. Oh, I like that. Yes, I like that. <laughs> I'm going to definitely screenshot that later, and I like that. But yeah, that's that's so true. I mean, you know, have respect, but you know, be yourself. But don't you know? There's no reason, especially even if people go into stores. Oh, and if they're in line, oh, could you like? I, does any do you guys do this? Like, if you're in line, checking out somewhere, let's say anywhere, like, are you on your phone talking? Unless it's like an absolute emergency. No. no. I go into my mother's house, and my nieces, my nephews, they're all, and my brothers, sisters, we go into my mother's house, and we put our phones, like, on silent, off, on a table. That's right. it. There's, there's no reason that we shouldn't, even, you know, at holidays, yeah, we do, like, Snapchat each other and stuff like that, you know, for memories, but... Correct. But no, you're not sitting there constantly, you know, the, the, the world now sits family dinner. There's, there was, there's been pictures. People have posted pictures on Facebook, which is pretty sad of family dinners where everybody's on their phone. Parents. Yes. Kids, I was fixing to bring ridiculous. that up. That's ridiculous. Yes. Absolutely. First of all, I would not post that. If that was my family, that's very I know, embarrassing. I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, 
I would think, well, they obviously don't want to talk to me. <laughs> I, exactly. would, I wouldn't be there, you know? So, it, it, you know, and as you know, being Italian, you know, the, the, the family dinner table and family dinners were like, you, you like one of the things you looked forward to. Yes. And, you know, and cousin, I mean, we had every Sunday growing up, we spent our Sundays with all our cousins at our grandparents' house for a big Sunday. Dinner. You went to church in the morning, mm -hmm. you hit the bread bakery in the, in, you know, mid morning, and then everybody ended up at your grandparents. That was like the most awesome thing. Nowadays, no one talks. Everybody knows what they're doing by social media or by Snapchat or whatever, which is pretty pathetic. But that's how life is going. Yeah, the well, kids go outside and play. The adults sit there and talk. But nowadays, the kids are sitting over there on the couch. Um, every one of them's got a phone in their hand. None of them talking to each other. Don't, don't even know they're going cousins. All right. Here's here's one saying that that. Uh, person very close to me says what you allow will continue so if you allow that to happen in your household or your family or you know your world it's going to continue so like that's why even with my nieces even when they were younger and they did have their own cell phones and stuff they didn't they weren't on them they would play and it was the kids went in the other room so it's hard for me to go to um, like it's not even just an Italian. It's I, maybe we maybe it's not just an Italian thing, you know. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. But it's hard for me to go somewhere where, like, the kids are like talking and screaming and like, and everybody's and I'm like, like what? Or they're on their cell phones and everybody's like paying attention to that. Like that's no, I won't. Uh. -uh. I, can't you know, I hate that. to bring up politics, but it's the same way there. What we allow is what we'll have to live with. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, like, what happened to, yeah. Like, we knew somebody, I heard it on, I can't remember what it was. It was a, probably a TV show. Like, we knew who the president was by just, like, the president, the news. Not like by tweets like Twitter. Like, I don't even, I know I have a Twitter account, but I think I shut it down or deleted it or something. But like, I mean, could you be any less professional? <laughs> See, yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, I think in, in, the, in the realm of the presidency, I think that because everybody's into the social media and tweeting that that is a platform that he chose to use but I don't think like, I think like you said, you know, professionally, for, I don't think the president should be tweeting out. I think that, you know, if he wants to put statements out, you put press statements out, you have people to do that. But there, he, there, there, he likes right to there. be, people he likes to be, in, he, in he likes to be in that mainstream and he likes to do that. You know. <laughs> but the thing is, even celebrities have. People. The celebrities do it all the time. I mean, most celebrities have the most, you know, like, like they were talking about this Kyle Jenner now, that she's now a billionaire, and her billions came from, you know, social media. I mean, she started a makeup company a couple of years ago, and now she's a billionaire. I mean, you know. Oh, Kylie? Yeah. Oh, good for, yeah, good for her. Yeah, you know what? That just happened. But, and, but her, her claim to fame is social media is what they said. Well, and true. and actually, oh, it Snapchat. is true. It is true. A lot of people follow her. Fashion. You know. No, the stuff she does. And it's like, you feel, you almost feel for her because she was always like the youngest one and she, she had her own show, you know, and she did say like, she always felt so like uncomfortable, like the whole thing with her lips being, you know, injected or whatever, but that was really nobody's business and, you know, everybody... But they, I guess they feel the need to like. Well, there's always haters on everything. Well, I was gonna say, with the more haters you have, the the more you've known you've made it. To be true, if you're honest with exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's the bottom line, okay? Because it's, if, no if, if, if nobody was listening. following you, okay, you'd be nothing, okay? So even yeah. the haters following you adds yes. to the numbers. <laughs> right. It's either they love you or they love to hate you. Because if Correct. not, they don't care. Then they don't bother. You know. Right. But, yeah, ex agreed. Uh, you know, like, I, I like what you said about Trump. I like his policies, but I sure do hate the way he gets his message out there. 
he really needs a press secretary or something to yes. get behind the scenes and let them he do needs, it. He needs because because we're assuming, not assuming, but but the presidency is a high honored position. So why put yes. out a tweet that you don't think about when you put it out first? He may be thinking the way it's coming out is the way he wants it to be portrayed, right. but everybody could read into it differently. He's talking like a good old boy, and that's how he wants to put well, it out. Well, that's how his platform. That's why he won, because everybody was sick and tired of the typical politician. And so he he spoke what everybody wanted to say yes. in their yes. mind. Get rid of this um, goody two-shoe that I'm better than you. Um, I, I guess it's, if I'm good, that makes you evil. The only problem is the way that, politics is now. Exactly. And the only problem that I have, you know, you're never going to, I mean, the reason we have a Democratic Party and a Republican Party is the fact that, you know, it, they're never going to be one party. It's always going to be two parties. There's got to be agreements, disagreements. But the fact of the matter is, on some of the political policies, neither Democrat nor Republicans can put themselves together to come up with a proper solution. One side wants to win each time. And I, I don't know if that's just the way America is now, that it's so competitive that everybody wants to win. You know, I, I don't I don't get that fact. That, right. You know, that, you know, we just, we can't get together. And, and the, com the country's so divided and, and, and disrespectful to the president, no matter who the president, I mean, I, I sit on a ton of boards and we do we have we have all kinds of votes and sometimes i vote yes sometimes i vote no but right. if i if i vote no i'm still i'm now i voted no i voiced my opinion for myself and for whoever else i was voicing it for that it came to me in that situation but now i have to respect the fact that the yes vote went out and this is the policy that's going to be and this is what we now have to push and and, and perform on i respect I I can't be sitting there saying to everybody, well, I didn't vote for that. And I don't get, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry. I, I had my no opinion, but the yes is one. And now I have to support what has to go on. I don't have to like Agreed. it. Right. Support the policy. Support. If there's something wrong with it, you change it a little bit and you try to keep pushing you a little to bit of a, a change medium. to help it out. Exactly. Yes. Come to a happy medium. And that's a problem these days is that we can't come to a happy medium. One side likes this, one side likes that. It's just, you know, we have this town politics right now. And, you know, we've been, they've been pushing for this community rec center for six years and the town every, every year has down, has voted it down. And every year the, the, the Paul the same politicians are in office. And this year we've got people running against some of these other ones to get them out. And, you know, the platform here is that, we're not listening to the people, but they keep saying is, oh, we're listening to the people that want. So if if you need a two thirds two third majority vote in the town in order to mm -hmm. pass something, th he they're only talking for one third. We've passed, we've we've defeated this this warrant item every single time, you know, by two thirds or more. And so our, our people in office are saying, well, we're supporting the one third, basically, and we want to push this, this community center. Well, that, that's wrong. You should be supporting for the majority. The majority doesn't want it. So now exactly. we have all this political fight, as I, I posted today. I said, you know, it's going to be an amazing political thing. We're going to see what happens. And I also wrote in the fact, just a little joke afterwards, that the local paper is running out of ink, running all these editorials. <laughs> Oh my God, that's funny though. It's true. You're right. It's it's. Yeah, I agree with that. It should be the yeah, majority. You, know, you, you got to be the majority of the people. That's what that's what you're working for is the majority of people. Those people, and, not, and that's where our politicians have lost it. They Correct. have really lost it by they're in there to oppose the other party, and that's it. That, that's, yeah, they they want to win. They want to yes. win. All right, they're well, not I'm there gonna... to help the. Um, little guy like you and me that say, Hey, wait a minute. You know, we think we are to do this. They don't care. Exactly. So I'm going to back out because I'm going to get ready. I got a, I got a big day tomorrow and uh, beautiful Jennifer, you say hi to Dave for me, please. And uh, he was <laughs> okay. happy, happy birthday to him the other day. And you got to get him back on. You got to get him on here some night so he can do some drumming. Cause he's, Oh my God, that'd good. be amazing. Right. So when, when he does, when Big Daddy does some type of music show, we got to get him on. All right. So 
love you. You took the show to a new level. The yes, Big Daddy did. Road Show. The Big Daddy Road Show. Wednesday, midweek mashup, 9 p.m. This is a brand new show. Pastor Tucker came in. He gave his opinions. Thank you very much. You have a good one. Nice meeting you. And uh, we'll uh, be back just on the chat listening. Have a good one. Uh, have a good one. Good night. Good night. Good night. So, okay. So, I, there you was can hear me? Yes, sir. Tom, there was a comment that I that somebody said, oh, I don't know what his name was. I'm sorry. But he said that, yes, Twitter is a great platform for whatever. If you but, can use it right. Yeah, that was, uh, that was my, co John. my co-host. No, I think uh, he. I huh. think Ryan said. Uh, yeah. Am I lagging, guys? No, you're good. Okay. All right. Really quick, I just want to mention John C. I've been sending you private messages. Please check them. Your camera is set. Your 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 uh, your horizontal instead of vertical. Who is I'm dying to get you live? But he's sideways, Jennifer. I don't see him. Um. Secondly, fantastic conversation. I dig what you're doing, Jennifer. And Pastor, I liked your thoughts and so I shouldn't uh, be like, if you're gonna do that, Jennifer, could you do it upside down? So <laughs> you think those have a faulty situation happen. Um there's see, John. My, okay, he's like, my cord is in yeah, the way. If they fall out. Let's see if they fall out. <laughs> We're talking about it so sensitive. They're just boobs for crying out loud. You want to see mine? Okay, We've John, you're now. Uh, this ain't Friday. I thought you said this was Wednesday, and we got to behave ourselves and fully clothed. Well, no, but, but I knew I know Jennifer, and she's a lady. She's not going to let her tatas fall out. Now, John, <laughs> he might. John, uh, just since, poor John's he having such a hard time. Set up. We got to get John some duct tape so he can duct tape his phone right. He's working frantically in the back office. But no, I like what you guys were doing. And me and Ryan were chatting privately and I was drinking beer. I said, what should we do? Should we let these guys just talk? And I, and we both agreed yes, because that's what America and the world needs is people to talk. Exactly. Why do you think yeah. I do so many shows? Why do you, I'm old school. Me too. I'm taco guy. I'm the one that comes to your house, you know, if something happens to your family member and I bring you some food or something. Right. Hey, Amen. Like that used to be the way, the American way. What the hell happened? There we don't have to agree on everything. Like no, we didn't agree with everybody at our family functions or at, at festivals. You still don't. But guess what? It's never possible. What are people, these young people are disconnected somehow, and I think it's because they're connected. They're they're reading some bullshit, and also I want to stress this too, and I'm going to catch some heat for this. A lot of our universities are teaching Pushing. crap. They're teaching crap. Like they haven't been? And, well, no, they weren't this bad. They used to teach history, and you, you, you got the proper history. John will come on and tell you a history lesson. But I wanted to just come and thank you both because this is awesome getting a break. I'm going to go stretch my legs. I'm going to bring John up and he can school you about some things. Because if John really comes on and gets going, you three are going to have a really fun conversation. And then, uh, Ryan, if you would just send me a message, please, of how much time we have left. Me and Ryan will come up and we'll wrap up the show. And it's been a great show. I, I don't want it to end just yet because I'm going to slice these up into multiple videos and put them on the YouTube channel. Okay. So finally, after Jennifer had a half hour of getting live, John C. has finally got vertical. So I'm going to ditch myself <laughs> because I like the conversation of where it's going. And I'm going to bring in some new energy with John. Cool. Ask him about hockey. Ask him about politics. Ask. I know you don't like politics, but just listen to the man. I will. About history. And John, um, jump in there. You know, Italians like Uncle Bruno and Jennifer, they're fast talkers, just like the Irish. You got to slip I'm in. Irish. I don't know. Sir. Yeah, but well, you're a fast talker. I am. I know. I love you. You know that. <laughs> yes, I know. I love you. I respect you, John. I'm glad you're running for office. If I lived down there, I'd vote for you. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go get a drink. 
And I'm going to bring up John C. If his, oh, John, please turn your, whenever people come live, it's just like calling the radio station. You got to wear earbuds or keep your volume low. Is my That's volume low? Is my volume okay? No, you're fine. If there was a problem, I would have mentioned. Whatever you're doing is fine. John's probably going to be fine, Hold too. my iPhone. And I feel like I'm preaching, Pastor. So I'm bailing. <laughs> Keep the conversation going. This is the Big Daddy Roadshow. Visit us on BigDaddyRoadshow.com. Here comes John C. Me and Ryan will be back to finish up the show when you guys finish this conversation on being butthurt. Everybody being so sensitive. Yes. Yes. And I'm a sensitive guy, but I'm only sensitive when you step on my blank. Pastor, I didn't want to say a bad word. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm a chain smoker, if you didn't notice that. Sorry. I mean, That's I'm okay. not sorry, but just, you know, I don't mean to keep lighting them, but I do. Um, so, yeah, everybody is quite sensitive. And I, like, like Bruno said that he held the door. Or, was it Bruno? It or was me. It? That's crazy. It's insane. Yeah, it was wild. I, I just kind of just, it floored me. I just couldn't believe it. Especially yeah. here in Texas. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you Southerners are like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're... I you think know, that... you got to have chivalry. Chivalry's not dead here in Texas, I guarantee you. I don't... Yeah, I don't think it is... I don't know. I think where I live, people put down this area so much, but I really feel <clears throat> that there's a lot of respect from people here and a lot of, like, uh, nice, you know... You know, people are really nice to each other. You know, if you're nice to them, they're going to be nice to you. And I didn't, I mean, thank God I've never had a, a you know, a, a bad reaction like that. Like, I mean, if somebody holds a door, whether it's a guy or a girl, I'm, thank you know, very thankful. I mean, uh, yeah, I can open the door myself. But, you know, if somebody's going to be nice enough to do that. It means they're actually thinking about themselves, you know, somebody else besides themselves. So, yeah. That's like going um, into the doctor's office the other day. I saw all the ladies were having a bad day. So I went out, went down the street, got them all a rose and a big old deal of chocolates, brought it back to them. It livened up their day. It made their oh, day. It does. You know? Yeah. And little things like that mean so much to people. Yes. And yeah. they're not done nowadays. So. No, I know. I know. It's like even Tom came in yes yesterday when I was working, and just that like when people yell to me, they're like, "Hey, Jennifer, you know how are you?" It really, it's just like, "Hey, like, hey," you know. It gets me like, I love that, you know. I, I love just a simple love hello. Yeah, makes people's day. Yeah, that's all it takes sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So, are you the history buff, Mister? Who oh, me? No. <laughs> I don't know. You were didn't Tom say something? Well, Tom, Tom likes to build me up, but no, I'm just a very simple man. <laughs> so, just like the rest of us. Yep, right. very simple. Worked my ass off since I was a little kid, and joined the military, and became a professional chef, professional writer afterwards. Did pretty good for my life, you know. And uh, right now, I'm fighting for medical disability and other things and the government seeks to give my money away to people that are here illegally and I kind of have a problem <laughs> I agree I agree with you that you know I mean like it, it, and we have homeless veterans that are dying that and we don't have the resources to help them but we have states willing to lay down 23 million dollars to a defense attorneys for that. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. I feel for all you veterans that really need the help and you have none from our government right now. And we try. And then, you know, we, 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 we are the ones that have to do all the legwork too. We yes. have to, you know, we have to apply for the programs. We have to wait basically yeah. unconditionally and hope for the best. I know. Yes. And I hope a Crazy. federal judge decides it in our favor. You know, <laughs> shit that I paid in since I was 11 years old. Yes, exactly. I lied. I got a paper route at 11 years old. I was supposed to be 13, but I worked since I was that age. Wow. So it's like, you know, 
I mean, there, there's a lot of things wrong with what's going on here. And again, politicians don't seem to be working for us. So all. you're the typical American. You've got out there your whole life. Yep. You've worked your butt off. Yep. You've done what you're supposed to do. You followed the yes, law. Sir. And now, for lack of a better word, and Lord forgive me, but they stick it up your butt. E- and then want to break it off. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I actually, I, I, I'm not going to even lie to you guys. I, I have a fatal diagnosis. I have liver disease and I have end-stage cirrhosis. I've gone through 19 surgeries over the past four years. And all I'm doing is fighting for my last days. Right. And a I little think, dignity. And, Someone to treat you with respect. And if they don't treat me with respect, <laughs> it's going to be a problem. <laughs> this, and, this, is where, this is where the politicians fail to meet uh, with the people themselves. Yes. Because they can't picture themselves in that position. They can't see themselves in that position. They don't even know what it is to be in that position. But, of course, they have the uh, law beside them and the right to adjudicate. And And we've got away from citizen politicians. We used to be citizens politicians. Yes. Used to go up to the um, state or federal um, office, do your duty, do it for the people in your um, district. And then go home and make a living. Yep. Exactly. Now, yeah. now they go there to make millions. That's mm-hmm. all they go there for. And I, I grew up in politicians. One, I grew up in one in one of the shithole bastions. I mean, my family is from New York. I'm fourth generation military. My my great grandfather landed on Ellis Island with my great grandmother. Every male in my family. So and when your grandfather York, and your grandmother landed. They went through medical. They stayed there till yes. somebody sponsored them or they yep. could prove that they could um, provide yep. them for themselves. And when they so got out, pitchers. nobody gave them a penny. They had to fight for it themselves. So exactly. They had to fight for every penny exactly. yes. that they earned to live. You know, and and seeing these other people coming in and, and taking advantage of our system and our generosity and our livelihood is just, it's... It's heartbreaking. It's demeaning. It is. It, it really yeah. is. It, it it's crushing. And I I watch you know as friends of mine are like losing all faith in the system itself, and and wondering why they can't get anything they want done. I mean, now luckily the VA has the choice system, and and people are getting health care properly. Mental I health. Say it. My daughter's it's a still disabled a hard vet also. Issue. Yeah. And we live so far from a big city. We live out in BFE. Um, okay. And for her, her to get medical care, she either has to drive two and a half hours yep. or file with the um, VA. The VA has to call the hospital. The hospital has to call back to the VA just to do a, um, a CAT just scan. To get an or MRI. An yeah. MRI or yeah. anything. Yep. Yep, I know exactly what that's about. Two months. Crazy. Yeah, two months or more. Yes. God forbid she doesn't need cardio help. She's going to be waiting two years. I know. They're killing our veterans. They're killing our people. It's it's our people. It's the the people that chose to stand up and serve and you know preserve our republic. We don't live in a democracy. We live in a republic. Republic. And, yes, you we know, did. yes, uh, you know, <laughs> this is why we chose what we chose. But you know, we didn't expect this in the end. That is a major problem. Well, where I live, I was just the other day. Well, I was just saying this that I was talking about like I had bronchitis, and I was like, you know, what am I gonna, you know, like I don't want to go to hospitals in the middle of the night, and. Like, our, our local hospital, I wouldn't go to anyway. I would go probably it's a half hour away. And they're, they're amazing, Commonwealth Health. It's, they're being, I think, bought out by Pittsburgh Medicine, which is even better. I know Commonwealth Health. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. They give you, like, in the waiting room, it's 30 minutes or your whole thing is, like, free or something. I don't know how it works. but Well, I have come, I, I've been through Commonwealth Health. I've been through Lehigh Valley Hospital System and Geisinger. 
Also, well, our hospital in Hazleton yeah. uh, is owned by Lehigh Valley, and oh god, yeah, I know. I trust so, me, I live here. What I what I said, <laughs> what I said when I had bronchitis was, I said unless I get, and I have health care, thank God, um, but I said unless I get shot on the way into the emergency room, I'm never getting seen. I will never get seen, and that's how our area is because there's, you know, there's shootings and. I mean, it's not like all the time, but they locked down the hospital then. and Oh, and, and of course, once the hospital is full because they're doing construction, it's uh, full divergence. So what they do is they just send you to other hospitals. They send you to Pottsville right. or they send you to Wilkes-Barre if you're able to take the drive. Yeah, when they're at full capacity, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's we had the Ellie Hazelden. Come on, I know exactly. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> Which is why I won't even. I won't even go there. I won't. Yeah, I won't even. We had yeah. Alan Guy Singer. No, the minor emergency is a lot hospital. better. Yeah. All stuff like that, bronchitis or something like that. Guys, can I break in here? Oh yes, yes thank you, John, so. for your service. Yeah, John, thank you. Um, yes, sir. You know, thank you, John. I, I'm also. Uh, I'm a patient through Lehigh Valley Network in some situations. And I feel like what we're, you know, this is a good conversation. It's good. It's definitely has its merits, but, you know, there's a lot of very good workers, nurses and doctors in that system. Oh, absolutely. They are, they are, okay, just let me finish, please. They are following orders from corrupt people. They yeah. are, they are, they are nursing. When my father and mother were RNs, they both passed away. They did nursing. They did real care. They cared about patients. They did, they, like Jennifer said, they touched the patient. They had time with the patient. Right. About right. 25 years ago, it started to become a paper pushing uh, game and lawsuits, I guess. And, you know, well, the bottom line is. Those folding. Yeah. Everything, everything. Greed is ruining everything. Everything costs yeah. so much. So yes. they're forced to do what they're doing. And right. it's like the whole system, if we don't, and everybody keeps saying we got to change the system, but then there's no change. Right. And in our national political system, it's the same shit for the last 20 years. And it's getting worse, not better. Right. Yeah. We need not truth in um, cost. We need to be able to take our health care across state lines. Yes. Um, yes. 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 There's several quick fixes. Accountable. There's several quick every fixes. Time. They can't do it. I'm sorry, jo- Big Daddy. No, no, it's okay. I'm just saying. Here comes the dog. <laughs> <Here they> come. <laughs> That's how uh, mine were. You missed it. There she goes. Show. Give me an idea on a notepad how much time we have left on this show. This is a really good first show. Um, no, Jennifer, I stayed in the, I stayed in the emergency room. But Lehigh Valley saved my life. Dr. Butt yeah, saved exactly. my That's life. That night, say. You know? Right. I'm not going to so put it. Like all negative no, about the nurses and doctors. It's not. No, it's not no, 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 no. No, it's the, the system. system it's, itself it's, is it's, broken. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's the yeah. system. Yeah. It's, it's not the beautiful people we have in healthcare. They're there right. to right. serve and help and um, do what they can. But with the I system, know, they can yeah, only do I so much. I to Nadine on the fourth floor. Because <laughs> if right. her little uh, country ass wasn't there, I probably wouldn't have made it through. <laughs> right. She was but an asshole. She kept me moving. <laughs> the people, okay, here's the problem. The people that are the nurses and the doctors, they're overtaxed too. They're tired of the yes. work too. They're tired <laughs> of the no. Everybody's got to give an inch, but nobody That's wants to. them with love and respect. They don't want to give one thirty second of an inch. They don't want yeah. to give anything. Everybody wants what they want, and that's not how it's going to work. Uh, it's not going to work that way. Right. And that's why I'm like, I'm I'm really enjoying tonight's show. The guests yeah. on tonight's show are well. Guess what? Up. It all comes down to corporate donors. You got it uh, exactly. Right. So how do we correct it? Since we're a bunch Big of guy, I know what problems. you need to do. You need to start. Um, deal to get campaigns for people normal citizens throughout the country going the to Congress. You can't afford it. The average Joe, listen, that's why I posted John Adams. Um you know he you might remember him. He was a president back in, you know, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson years. How would we remember that? 
We're not I remember, write it down. Look it up. <laughs> and, you know, and John Quincy Adams followed. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I think that's, that's right. right. Oh, I that's mean, right. The thing, I was joking. The point, I'm very old, Jennifer. I'm very old. <laughs> I'm wise beyond my years. But the thing is, is that that man went, served his country like all those guys. And those guys remember, and and my Marine friend, John, will appreciate this. I never served, but I served veterans since I'm five years old. And that's a fact. Yes. Uh, is that those men had the king what in their head in a, in a noose. Those those men had their their families were threatened with houses being burned down. And that's how fed up they were with the system. OK, the revolution became necessary. And if you read the chat tonight, which I'm sure you couldn't keep up with it because there's already 300 comments. Um, and some Shall of them we were quite like, deal. <laughs> when is it when is the straw going to break Bec uh, the break the camel's back? Because people can't afford shit anymore. The average people are hurting. Well, yes. I used to make good money. I'm hurting. I'm getting older. I just I'm got just a watching is all I these political parties eat themselves alive from the inside out. And I'm just going to wait. <laughs> and then we can put our person forward. We could find that individual that can do right for this country. Congratulations. Right, but the bottom, Judy, line, the bottom line is. Yes, congratulations, is that, Judy. <laughs> yeah, Judy won the soap. Yay. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you, Ryan, for that one out. I don't uh, want to play it anymore. I can get in trouble. <laughs> no, but the point is, and John, thank you for keeping your uh, cool because I've read some of yeah. your posts and you can go off on people. Man, you can go off on people. Yes, I can. But, but you know, that's not for tonight. What I think, well, the point is, is I think sometimes they deserve it. That's another thing that's wrong in this country. Agreed. When we don't get along and when people are so far out of line, so well, nobody's far been, out of line. Nobody's in far nobody's out of line. So. Nobody's yeah. giving them the hockey shot up into the glass and going, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cross check you know, to the uncles, face. Right? Be like, shut up. Our uncles would have said, hey, <laughs> yeah. you're being silly. Just the look. I would silly. get a look. <laughs> That's the it. The look, right. And you didn't say a word when you got that look. For two weeks. <laughs> if we <laughs> the young generation to look like that, what do they do to us? What do they say to us? Hell, pastor couldn't even open up a door for a lady. What the hell is wrong with the women today? The young people that complain about that, you have lost your minds. It's just another human being doing a kind thing and exactly. holding the door for you. That was my point. That was my whole point about everybody. I know. So but I'm right, to that's say a courteous it. gesture. That's that's be, that's yeah, being a man so, in my book. So I just love what Jennifer said. Like if if you know. What would you tell them if if you if you held the door if they what what did you say like tell them to screw off I don't know like they're being more rude that's than the person holding the door. Hey, the door you said screw off. That's, they that's your right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, my point is is that you can't you can't be mad at somebody for doing a nice thing for you. Right. Opening the door doesn't say oh we got to sleep immediately together. And it's it's not even even in in the thought process. It's just being nice. Right. Real men will just right. walk away so from it. Real men will just simply walk away from it and not tolerate that kind of bullshit. Because we know what we want in our life. We don't want that in our life. So we walk away. Right. Period. It's Pass the one thick. That's it. <laughs> Get him over, you know? He was being... Pretty like, much y'all said everything. I mean... Yeah. And I, you didn't I, I need just, God's forgiveness for having you said up their butt. God's cool with you on that. I guarantee it. <laughs> I know he is, but you know, I still don't want to um, portray don't him in a bad light, <laughs> no matter what I do. I hear that, but the bottom line is, is I think when a lot of these people, these supposed super religious people meet up with the creator, I think that if that is the case, they're going to be sorry. We're all, be very, we all come short of the glory. Exactly. But the right. bottom line is the sinners center today are really bad sinners. And where do they usually yes. sit, Pastor? In the front, front of the Nobody church. is saying nobody is is above reproach. I'm sorry. Everyone's so, gonna have to meet that day. Just depends on when it is and you know how bad you get screwed. <laughs> Man, I hope when that day comes, we're legal with marijuana. I want to be high as you can be. <laughs> I, I, yeah. 
I want to be I'll be doing blitz. He actually said he gave all plants blitz. and everything on the earth for <laughs> our enjoyment. What did I tell you about staying relevant, Big Daddy? Stay relevant. <laughs> you gotta say hi AF. Hey, you can say what you want. Uh, Ryan says we have one hour to go. What else well, can we talk about? Let's let's turn the page. Well, I haven't been high AF in a very long time. No. No, I know. I've been like off the off, off the, the radar. Off Dropped the off the end of the world. <laughs> in the ocean. I've been off the internet. I've just I haven't gone out in a while. I just I don't know. I've just kind of been enjoying Well, since I have you. But you do so difficult on the show. She's so difficult to get on the show. What's something relevant today? What's trending? What's hot right now? Um, this this whole like sensitivity issue and no, but we covered that already. We got that. What about but like one thing that you did bring up there is medical marijuana, the CBD, and all that. Yeah. That right there really needs to be pushed for our terminal ill patients, our cancer patients and stuff, because it helps them so much. The glaucoma patients, there's several people that can benefit from that besides the recreational user. Um, you know? I have, I have a friend who ha has suffered from grand mal epileptic seizures since she was six years old. Aww. Since she started, started taking oils. She has not had a seizure in one year and 23 months. Wow. That's I'm sorry, I'm laughing at Ryan's comments in the chat. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> for real. I don't get to see these comments. How come? Well, here it is. It says, oh, if you want yeah, to two years and a, yeah, almost, yeah. So, no, it's lead. It, it's real. <laughs> we'll give up it's something funny. else. <laughs> One thing I can assure you. to give up the, the thing you cherish the most. <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah, I my God, I pray to is different. He's cool with it. He made that plan. He said, "Smoke it." I got a cool God. I don't know what I don't know what you're what what's going down with your God, but my God's super cool. My God's, my God's super cool. cool. Too. <laughs> yes, you're right. I, I but I still got to give you trouble there. Well, you know, my God, my I God is don't worry. Faster. <laughs> hey, faster! I guarantee you, Jesus smoked some serious weed. What do you think that burning bush was all about? And all that. Yeah. Those people were high. Those people were high. <laughs> Moses, <laughs> Moses went wandering off I up got, into the mountains. Yeah. Oh, and, no. and then he come back glowing like for three days. Yeah. Jesus, I, I, I fell asleep I, in this cave. I woke up three days later. The whole world was different. What a fucking trip, man. <laughs> That's a crazy trip, right? He's probably doing <laughs> shrooms or something. Yeah. That's what I said, like peyote. He was probably like out in the desert <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> like, good for him. Buzzed out in the middle of the fucking desert like, wow. Uh, <laughs> they, just found, they just found another tomb. And you if know you how the Egyptians... Yeah, and they I buried saw that. their tomb with them, and they found uh, smokable cannabis in the tomb. You yes! know, it was yes. the medicine. It was the medicine the people used. At Cleopatra the time, yes. used it. The queen used it, That's and then all of a sudden, oh, I'm... Cleopatra. Did you know that? Were you Cleopatra? I did not know that. Can you not tell? You're going to well, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I am so Cleopatra. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ryan, Ryan says he's in the chat now. He says Moses, the Ark. That was just a bad trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That guy was so high he started collecting animals. He's like, get on Ryan the damn Ryan boat. Swinging from the rafters, man. Play, Irene. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> oh. I packed into the bowl. It was fucking awesome. He was out in Lake Iowa. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan said something interesting, too, in the chat. He says, I cherish being sober from weed. You know, just like anything, you know, what did our parents and grandparents teach us? Always old school. Everything in moderation. In moderation. Exactly. Simple. It, yes, you know, what? gluttony does I, not become a sin <laughs> until it's overdone. Drinking does not become a sin until it's overdone. It's everything in Speaking moderation. Right. Let me grab a beer. <laughs> You're perfect, Tom. Grab one for me. Perfect. <laughs> Speaking of that, Pastor, here's to you. Um, Sounds no, good. Cool, oh, <laughs> yeah. 
I'd go hang out with your church. I'd, I'd hang out in your flock, brother. Um, you, you got common sense. I like that. Um, That's lacking a lot in this days and age. Yeah. Yeah, because it was not taught. And the kids, what happened was, and this is just my theory, and I want to hear, it's just a theory. I'm not saying it's gospel. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Um, well, I'm going to say it. But after you do. What, I think, what I think happened was, um, I don't know if it was that Spock fella that taught the parents. Parents stopped being parents, and they wanted to be their best friends of their children. Yeah. And I get that. I am a really close with my daughter. But the yes. bottom line is, at the end of the day, I'm her father. And I rarely have yeah, to I get to talk like Jennifer says, and my daughter gets it. And when the teachers see me at, at meetings or uh, see my uh, wife who's separated, we're separated. When the teachers meet us, they'll say, this kid has was brought up right. And yes. I go, yeah, we, awesome. we brought her up the way we were brought up. And But some parents, and I'm not kicking everybody. Everybody's going to think, oh, you're slamming everybody. No. Some parents are working 15 hour days. They get home, they don't even see their kids. Right. That's what and wrong. they expect the teachers to do everything. Have, have we have some great. Excuse me, just let me finish a thought. The corporations have learned through through paperwork, paper pushing, policies to wring out all of the labor, every last drop out of people. And yes. the people think they're making big money and stuff, but they're not having a life. Right. They're not having a life. And everybody's suffering. The kids aren't being taught. And that's what we're – so those those roosters, they came home, you know, that's after 20, 30 years of that. Yes. That's the but problem it's not everybody. everybody. There's still great kids <laughs> out there. There's still people with Tom, hope. Here's your, here's, your, here's your theory of that. One of my relatives said in, in Europe, they, they – in America – okay, like in America, they live to work. Okay, but in Europe, they work to live. It makes sense. Yeah. Like yeah. here, it's like people like think that they're gonna like, and it's so sad. Like, and sadly, they didn't expect so many veterans to make it. This is why the veteran system is so like bad because they didn't expect. Well, it. in all of history, <laughs> I don't think warriors were taken care of you know it's yeah. always been they've been the bottom of the barrel right um no, and it's wrong exactly. it's i do have a question for you go ahead they um can't even take care of our veterans and that's the most socialist part of our government how in the world do they think they're going to take care of everybody under medicare for all not gonna happen no it's that's not. a dream. That's a, that's a pipe dream, and that's a political marketing strategy or, or voting. Fifty-nine trillion dollar pipe dream, and it's not going to happen. Right, it, it, and they know it's not going to happen. And people, these young people, expect it to happen, want it to happen. They want their cake and they want to eat it too, and all that. And that's because they um, expect it. They expect it. They are. They are. This. Well, guess people. what? You know what they're, they're gonna entitled. Expect? They're yeah. Okay, but what are they? Okay, but word. okay, we could we could say all those words entitled. They expect it, but what's the reality? What are they going to get? Really, we all know we're older. What are they going to get? Guts. They're going to get a world of hurt. Yes. If they don't wake up and grab a shovel and like John, start uh, throwing papers at eleven and saving your money and then doing all the right things and then getting screwed by Uncle Sam is a real kick in the dick and people yes. are getting tired of it. And it's reality. It. it really is. Yeah. It, but it's it worse just, than it's it ever happens. been, John. Mm -hmm. and people say it's oh, it's the best it's ever been. Yeah, it's the best it's ever been for a lot sure. of people. For but certain people. people worst it's ever not me <laughs> no you know, I, and i'm not I'm, I'm not gonna lie either i have two daughters i have one who's married she has two children right now i have another one that's in the air force academy and she's gonna kick motherfucking ass go for you know <laughs> this is not a damn joke <laughs> they both well because the other one's a, a mother you said i mean that's i can't imagine like my mother, my, my, my former fiance, I, I do regret some of the mistakes that we made. You know, we both made mistakes, this and that. But you know what? We co-parented properly. We did it the right way. And things are the, the way it's supposed to be. Well, there's 
there's no book on parenting, but I mean, so I, right. I don't think the right way or a wrong way. And like the whole common sense thing is it's only, and it, no, we were both involved in, 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 in each common, of their lives. It's only yeah. common sense if it's common to you. So if the people yeah. around you and your parents and your teachers are all on their cell phones, what do you expect? You know, well, we pulled them out of the schools. School. That was the whole thing. Okay. We weren't tolerating that kind of crap. Right. <laughs> you know, it's what? like a friend of mine. There's a story I like to tell about a friend of mine. Him and his ex-wife were having all types of heck in a divorce. They were going at each other. I finally one day looked at him. I said, you got a 12-year-old son there. How are you treating him or showing him how to treat women? I said, right. you need to take that woman um, some roses. And if that boy's around, you need to show him that you respect his mother. Regardless if you hate her, regardless if you think she's done everything in the world wrong, you still need to respect her. That way, that boy learns to respect women. Well, Pastor, that sounds like you're preaching to me. Listen, I was just <laughs> I agree I with it. Watching I, I will okay, agree with I, it. That was kind of funny. Okay, I could understand where a lot of people could just clearly agree with that, but um. Not everybody's situation is maybe as simple as you're. Maybe there's stuff you're it's not seeing. Dry, yes. Right. Yes. Always, there's there's always know, gray. Right. right. There's definitely a ton of there's there's a ten. Uh, this is it's called the gray scale. There's ten points to it, and um, yeah, I would agree that. But yeah, you should swallow your pride. But the bottom line is, is that in today's day and age, and probably all ages for thousands and years since Neanderthal time, you know. Women can't always get the pass. They can't. And that's right. just a silly thing. But so, I mean, you, you know, you thought, still fight her in court. You still do everything you're going to do. But you you, you still, no, I, while that boy's yes. around, treat her with respect. Well, I think it okay, should be right. equal. I think they should both I treat think the other. Right. And it, it, it's not equal. Let's face it. It's definitely not equal. It could be both, it could be both ways. It could be one-sided. Right. But the thing is, is that what we could do is just agree to disagree and not argue. So just be adults yes. and say, look, that's where I'm at. We have just separated. We've gone our exactly. The point, the, point, and, the point is just act proper. Right. You're treating her with well, respect yeah, by like agreeing when, to disagree. You, okay. Right. But, you know, it's sort of like act proper. If somebody's being, if, if any one of the parties are just being, and it could be me, it could be my partner, it could be somebody else, it could be their partner, it could be both parties acting silly at times over time. But yeah, some people but you take that away from the kids. Where the kids can't uh, again, the, all I'm saying is, oh, well, yeah, you should definitely do all of it away from the kids. But again, that's a fairy tale because right, yeah, it's hard to run into your kids. Some some days the the sandpaper gets the last of your nerve, and um, but I would never condone violence. Walk away. I never, you know what I mean. Um, I'm just saying it's not nothing's that. And that's the problem with life. Nothing's that simple. Nothing's Nothing. perfect. Nothing's simple. Everything's going to be hard. You're the exact failure God knew you were going to be. <laughs> Let me ask you something about your story, though. <laughs> what did the man and the woman end up doing? I think yeah, John had to pee or something. Okay. He John actually first. did that, and they got back together, and they've been married over 10 years now. Wow. Oh, that's good. See? There you go. That's a wonderful story. Happy ending. That's awesome. Yeah. It worked that's perfect really for awesome. him, but in that situation. Right. Hey, right. really quick. I got to – folks, you guys have been wonderful on the show tonight. Uh, Ryan's showing me paperwork that says we got to wind it down. So beautiful Jennifer, here's yeah. the deal. Okay. When the new studio is done, we have uh, Ryan working on a rocket ship, powerful computer. He says he's making me a UFO or something. I'm, I'm going to be able to do like anti-gravity soon. So um, <laughs> will, you come, will you come live from the studio when we have the new studio set up? Yeah. Can I come live like next week or Saturday, whenever the heck you're going to No, do I just said when the studio is set up. I can't even come live back no. on the show again? See, Pastor, this is the problem. People don't listen. <laughs> this um, is the problem. You can... He asked, this guy I breaks my balls over two years, come on the show, come on the show. And then 
Where's my Bruno when I need him? And then oh. he backed me up on this. And then, to, like, and then he's like, well, well, he's a quasi Italian. <laughs> he's a Boston fan, so I got a little issue with him as an Italian, anyway. What? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. All right, listen, let's not start yes, him off here. Shot fired. <laughs> what? There's no such thing. <laughs> Jennifer, throw me a little bit more heat, and then I got to say good night. You can come yeah. live when the new studio is done. The reason why you can't come here is because I'm having serious issues with a dog that is going to have to get uh, a visit to a head a head doctor because she's losing her shit. Either I'm going to have I have to take her to a vet and give her I don't know. Let the doctors figure her out. Let me but come visit. Not, let me come visit the dog. Yeah, I, yeah I'm going to let you she's come probably, visit, and then this dog's going to bite you. That's smart. If 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 she has been stepped, she might be going into heat in a weird way. And she might require way. hormones. You, you might want to talk to her about that. Yeah. The sweetest, okay. most docile animal with me, but she's just attacking cats. Oh. And yeah. I don't know. No idea what's it just she yeah. was never like that. It sounds like a hormonal imbalance type thing to me. For one dog, all my dogs have been uh, ke uh, kennel dogs to, that we saved. But yeah. Bella, just all of a sudden, you know, do dogs get schizophrenia? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they get hormonal. Yeah, Listen, we're up against the clock, guys. So I'm going to okay. let you all say your last I'm piece and say your question. question. Go ahead, Jennifer. So, ladies first. I'm in, can I come? <laughs> can I come live like this? Like you know, pop on like. Well, what do you think? Yes, but the new rule is, and as tonight's proven, we have so many people wanting to get live. I give <laughs> everybody a time slot. Now I let this one go longer because everybody's really being cool. And I give what's called a time extension for coolness. <laughs> and it was a pretty so, fucking awesome show. So it was yeah. a great show. Yeah, it was if there great. was no <laughs> more, more shows tonight, we should, we should not. We should get this show nominated. How much yeah, time, yes. Ryan? Give me a rough oh, idea. Got, 15, yeah, 20? Right. What do we got? Ryan's not even listening to me. Okay, Jennifer, <laughs> you know I'll let you come on this in the studio and sit on my damn lap if you want to. You know <laughs> I'll do it. But, uh, you know, I'm a good Catholic boy. Okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Let's see. We're going to wind it down. John, thanks for there. coming live. Pastor, thanks for coming live. If anybody has anything to promote, like, you know, and by the way, uh, uh, Jennifer's not joking. I have been watching her do her hair care work for years. And uh, what did I say to that young girl that was in your seat the other night? I said, you realize you have one of the best girls for hair color in the world working Thank for you. you. Well, what, where and, where uh, is the hair at? Go look at her hair work. And when, especially oh. the color. When she does coloring, I've never seen it. And then when Let you feel know, the I person. I wish everybody watching this show could have experienced what I've experienced when I touch the beautiful Jennifer's hair. It's <laughs> unbelievable. It's so soft. My beard is so scruffy and hard. You know? Wait, you got to get one of those beard. Did you see that beard thing? I'm not doing the beard thing. That's well, the most just ridiculous put some thing. Nice oil and some, you know. No man's going to do that. And we don't want oils on our beard. We're men. No, 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 no. This oh, all I need is a lighter, man. Years, it it could be epic. <laughs> have been taking care of their beards and their nails, and this is true. I mean, I can remember, like, my father always had... Trying to get me to go up like Michael Jackson and Paul Stanley. No, I'm not saying, like... I'm not saying, like... I don't know. There's You're going to put chemicals in my fa on my face. I'm going to catch you on fire. No. Uh, That's what I'm saying. I, I didn't mean it. Like I just meant, like you know, care of it, hair on your face, for God's sake. It's on my face. Well, you think I don't care for it? Well, oh, I can't. Even. I'm gonna get you some beard cream or something for it. You come and rub some beard cream on me live in <laughs> <from> the studio. <laughs> I will. I would love to do that. I'll show and like. That's gonna have to be a Friday night show, though. Yeah, that was good. That's right. That might be a free for all. <laughs> Saturday night, you can rub, Saturday you can rub whatever you want on Big Daddy, okay? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> it's on now. <laughs> Beautiful Jennifer, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. And yes, you can come back now that you finally learned how to work the app. I'm I so did. proud of you. Thank you guys. <laughs> nice All right, meeting all. great. Thanks for coming. 
I'm out. Say goodnight to Uncle Bruno, Jennifer. He's going to be pissed. Good night. Good night. It was nice talking to you, Robert. Nice talking to you, sir. And you'll be all right. in my prayers. Thank you. Oh, Pastor, I'll take really all those prayers. Jennifer, we're out. I'm going to drop Jennifer. I got to do it. And then, John, thanks for coming, too. I, you were a little sideways there for a while in the back office, but you figured it out. Thank you, sir. Uh, when you had the problem, John, was it from a laptop or from an iPad at first? Actually, from a laptop first. And then I yeah, swapped to my six, phone, six. and then I think I got it working from there. Yeah. Yeah, please, everybody that wants to come live, do it from your smartphones, please. And also, yeah. if you wear the earbuds like Pastor, that's really the best way to do it. Okay? All right. Pastor, you keep praying for the Big Daddy Roadshow. Pray for our veterans. Pray for the homeless. Pray for the downtrodden. And you know what? Throw some super prayers out there for our politicians that they get their heads yes, out of their they ass. they definitely need They're it. In the world. And let human beings live in peace and uh, I'm going to say it because it needs to be said. Not all the time, not more than booze, but give that plant, cannabis, another look. It's not the devil that everybody thinks it is. That's just been a bunch of garbage like all the other garbage we were, we were conditioned to believe. That's when the powerful people that ran the, the uh, wood cutting industry didn't want hemp to uh, cut into their, their business. Wow. Office. It all comes down to the mighty dollar. Follow yeah. the dollar. I'm going to bring Ryan back. I'm going to say goodnight to you guys, and you're welcome back anytime. Good night, sir. Good night, Pastor. I appreciate it. Okay. Now, John, do you have anything before we bail? Um, No, you pretty much said it all there, man. <laughs> How about something to my Marine friends out there that they'd understand? Uh, the only thing that I can say to my Marine friends out there is stay the course. And hoorah. <laughs> stay All right. Course. Stay the course and God bless you guys. Okay, John, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Okay, Ryan. What's going on? Are you shuffling papers, brother? I might be. You know what that means. What Stick that a mean? fork in it. This show's done. We didn't even get to talk to Alexa. Really quick, let me just bring up the Alexa. Just really quick, what do we got left? I got about a half hour left. How the hell do you look up really quick? How do you get to talk to the social bot? I, for the life of me, I can never remember. Uh, Alexa, let's talk. Or Alexa, social bot. Let's see. I forget what you got to say. It's a let's talk. Here we go. I'll get you the 2018 winner, Gun Rock from the University of California, Davis. When you're done, say stop. Hi, this is an Alexa Prize social bot. It's really good to meet you. Do you want to tell me your name? Sure. Big. So, what's your name? Big Daddy. Okay, it's nice to talk to you. How are you doing today? Wonderful, dear. Nice. I'm glad you're having a good day. So, I'm a huge movie fan. Do you like to watch movies? No. Spoiler alert, I, I sort of have a confession. Okay. I like to watch funny animal videos when I'm supposed to be learning new things. Maybe you can relate. Yeah, Do we you like animals? Ask her about uh, sure. uh, ask her about, flaws, Cap ask her about Captain yeah. Marvel, see if she knows anything. Hmm. I really love horses. One of my favorite books is Black Beauty. Do you like to read? Uh, yes, even the tough words. Cool. I love to read when I'm not chatting. Hmm. Have you read any good books recently? Um, Robert Frost recently. Uh, yeah. That's not the nice. name of the book, though. What book did you read? Oh, uh, God, I don't know what's called. It's like a collection of Robert Frost. I forget. Can you please repeat the book name? Uh, I no. think I heard wrong. Uh, I, I said it wrong. You didn't hear it wrong. Ryan. Ah, I don't know any books by that name. Me neither. Sorry if I sometimes confuse you saying something else with a book name. I'm sorry. Anyways, sorry. I was I thinking. Okay, I'm who's thinking. Who's your favorite author? I like Stephen King. His novels are so suspenseful. I know. The king of horror, indeed. Absolutely. He lives in Maine. Um, hmm. Mm, it's kind uh, of mm. hard to choose. 
There are certainly a lot of great authors. I think books have the power to change the world. In your opinion, what book has had a big impact? I'm uh, thinking the Bible. I'm thinking Curious George. Okay, really. Yeah. There have been a lot of influential books. It's hard to choose. By the way, some books are so exciting to read, you just can't put it down. What's a book that you just couldn't stop reading? Uh, Playboy. Well, that's a magazine. Oh, I'm sorry. Playboy? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think of two books. Let me make sure I got the right one. The reader. Did you mean the book Playboy Pilot by Penelope Ward? Alexis, stop. I, is that what we say? Thanks for chatting. No problem. Quick question. Okay. On a scale from one to five stars, how do you feel about speaking with this social bot again? Three. Thanks. Anything else you'd like to tell the team about your experience? Yes, I'd like to be able to break in and change the subject. You know, turn the page. Got it. To try another social bot, just say, Alexa, let's chat. Roger that. Thank you. Hey, Alexa, I love you. That's really nice. Thanks. Yeah, that's what the show's all about, being really nice. Okay, thank you, Alexa. Stand down. Um, Ryan, how about that thing with Michael Jackson and all the new uh, things coming up with Michael Jackson? We need to talk about that in the future. We're going to hope uh, the best for Jack Neary. Yeah. Uh, he's not feeling well this this week, folks. He was going to come on and really talk uh, some serious stuff about Amazon. We're, I told him when people get sick, we'll just push the topics down, down the road. Yeah, maybe right? next week. So, Ryan, uh, anything you want to add to this wonderful show? Uh, did you hear about the guy that was trapped in his vehicle for five days and he survived by eating taco sauce? Uh, I think I heard that. Uh, vaguely remember hearing about him surviving eating taco sauce. Yes. He said that Taco Bell fire sauce saves lives. Oh, see, I picked up the. I was, I was wondering, was he eating it out of packs? Yeah, he, he like eating little, it out of little packets. So for how many days? Five days. Five days. And where? And what was he trapped in? Uh, his vehicle. Huh. But why? Snow. Uh, yeah. Looking at the pictures, it looks like he was trapped in snow. Landslide. Okay. Um. You, you were told to remind me, uh, in honor of our veterans and stuff, what was the last thing we wanted to finish up on, on the Big Daddy Roadshow midweek mashup? Uh, well, the uh, iconic Times Square kiss photo uh, from a World War II sailor. Uh, he died at age 95. Uh, George Men, uh, Mendonza. I'm going to guess that's his last name. Good enough. Close enough. Yeah. Famous Life Cover Magazine photo. Um, this was your idea to bring this up. I'm so glad you did. Anytime we can honor our troops. So the story behind this, as I gather it, just learned it today, actually. He kissed a random nurse. His fiance or girlfriend was in the background of the picture. Smiling. Smiling. Mm -hmm. She was kinky. That's cool. Well, yeah, yeah, I suppose. Uh, the, fine young lady, hot, the fine young He's lady's name good. was uh, Greta Friedman. Greta. Nothing sexier than that name, Greta. Um, I got the great picture. Here's a picture of the kiss and the actual couple when they were a little bit older. Mm -hmm. uh, probably not 90-something. And my favorite picture, a lot of times you see I put pictures up. Like, did you notice tonight I put up a black and white of Ozzy? Yes. Yeah, I did that for a reason because that's a lost art too, black and white and sepia tone and all that. But the last picture I have is the actual, I imagine it's the original. Um, this is a great picture. It's all black and white. But you can notice how you can really check out the architecture in the background of this picture. Um, really cool. Look at that, the difference. That's stunning. Yeah. Look at absolutely. it. Absolutely. Look at her with her leg up, and she just surrendered there. But, you know, they were probably so happy that the war was over. I'd be, I'd be kissing strangers, too. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, especially after a war like World War II. That was a nasty war. <laughs> By the way, what was that pyro beard you were talking about? Uh, about, uh, they said, uh, putting all the cosmetics in your beard. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and don't think I didn't hear that. Yeah, nasty war, to say the least. Um, and that's what we don't want to get back to, folks. You know, I mean, we, we've been in, that's another problem in this country. We've been in constant wars, geez, since what? Saddam Hussein? Yeah. It's like never time. ending. Can we have some peace, please? Can we all just like get along? I mean, I hate to get all hippie on everybody, but seriously. And uh, it's, for it's all you people the out there hurting, for all you people out there hurting kids, I got a special picture for you. Check this one out, Ryan. People are going to be pissed at this one. <laughs> smile for the camera. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. It's a smile. Wait for the flash. That's hysterical. <laughs> All right, I'd like to thank all my guests, especially Alexa. I'd like to thank you, Ryan, for all the efforts you're doing to make the show better. No problem Folks, at all. Uh, we've got new computer system. I got a fancy computer system coming. I got this monitor that it's like R2 unit. It pops up. It's crazy. Um, I still haven't decided if I'm changing the set with the Batman or not, but I have other ideas. I have other stuff and a lot of props. I have antiques and stuff. I haven't decided yet. Yeah, you might we'll want to come over and help me with that. We'll figure exactly. it out. Exactly. All right. Give me a time. Let's finish this. What, what uh, are we in review? In review, what do we talk about today? People are being too uptight. This is beautiful Jennifer. <laughs> well, we talked um, about our uh, strain, of the, strain of the week. The strain of the week. Which no, the super, month. We're doing the month. The you month. said the week earlier. Okay. I, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. If I come up with a new strain that I read that sounds interesting, because I live in a state that's like backwards and we can't act like adults and put into our body a natural herb. I don't get it. Seems corrupt to me. Seems not right. That's just that's just me talking as a free speaking American crazy like that. Let's see. Yeah, we reviewed but, uh, uh, Captain Marvel. That was awesome. Wasn't that he was awesome. a fantastic first guest? Uh, Man, he's going to be he was a hard one to follow. Uh, and yet they still pulled it off. I think everybody was just equally awesome. It was a great show. show. All right, Ryan, do me a favor. Give me a yes. song to end the show that maybe won't give me something that probably even the bots won't pick up. Something unique. Uh, boy, that's going to be a tough one because Amazon has and a lot we'll of wind it down. The first show, the first number one, you were here. Uh, the hmm. Big Daddy. Roadshow midweek mashup. Shout out to my friends at the Broken Glass Tavern. We're coming to hang out with you soon. Donnie D tomorrow night, or is it tonight? What what is today? Is it Thursday now? Uh, no, uh yes, it's Thursday now. It's Thursday now. Donnie D's doing uh, karaoke at the uh, Broken Glass Tavern tonight nice. at nine. Yeah, nine o'clock. Jennifer, you want to go out and do karaoke with Big Daddy? Um, PA is not a state; it's Commonwealth. That's why, Tom. Uh, you know what? Okay, Jennifer, you've had your time tonight. <laughs> I love I love that energy me and her have, you know? Mm -hmm. She gets ticked off at me. It's awesome. I'm not ticked off at her. I've always liked her. She's really a cool person, and she's a good spirit. She's a good soul. Um, but anyway, John, who else? Um, Gerald, uh, everybody just killed it tonight, and I couldn't have asked for a better first show. So I guess we'll if if Ryan comes up with a song. How about, we'll say how about something by Sonic Youth? Okay. Anything. Do you want me to do random? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the show. If you wouldn't mind hitting the love and likes and the hearts and all that and uh, share it with your friends. I don't think this show was all that bad. Like language wise. No. Everybody kept their clothes on except for you. Yeah, well. All right. What was it again? Sonic Hedgehog. Sonic Youth. Alexa. Oh. Alexa, play Sonic Youth. Shuffling songs by Sonic Youth. You got any papers to shuffle? Let's do it. Good night, everybody. Good night, Ryan. Have a good one, bud. This song is dirty.
Good night, Ryan. Have a good one, bud. Thank you.